Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to another exciting drunken episode of Ed Madison Podcast Project. And I say drunken, I might get a little drunk, but my good friend here is going to have a drink with me. And my friend today with me is Ethan Burns. Say hello, Ethan. Hello. How's it going? Yeah. So Ethan, <laughs> by the way, thanks for coming over. Yep. My pleasure. My Ethan pleasure. came over. That's all right. This is my new ice holder. Thanks, Lacey. Appreciate that for the drinks. And by the way, we're changing it up a little bit. So usually what I drink on my podcast is scotch traditionally, but I, um, I, I reached out ahead of time with Ethan. Um, and I just wanted to say, Hey, you know, is alcohol okay while we're talking? Um, and he said that it was okay, but he mentioned vodka. The good news is we had some vodka in the freezer and this is Smith works. Not like I'm trying to, you know, throw an ad for anybody, but yeah. Uh, Blake Shelton, I think endorses that I'm going to be drinking tequila. It's been my recent go-to here, occasionally, besides Scotch. While I'm opening this up, you want to introduce yourself, say hello, and where you're from, who you are, and all that fun stuff. Um, I'm Ethan Burns, uh, family man, gym owner, uh, musician, uh, I guess jack of all trades. Um, I'm not. I don't drink much anymore, um, so I'm, I'm I'm a lightweight. So I'm going to stick with uh, you know possibly one. Um, other than that, um, I'm from Muscatine originally. I live currently just outside of the Lone Tree area. Um, I have a little acreage out there with my wife and my young daughter. She's not quite two. Um, own a gym in the Coralville area, Alchemy Strength and Conditioning. Um, I do quite a bit of work online um, with battle ropes um, and some different things like that on social media quite a bit. Things like that. Try and keep that interesting. And um, yeah, other than that, I'm just having a good old time. That's awesome. I, you know, one of the things is I, I met, uh, Ethan, like I've met a, a lot of my guests is through music one way or another mm -hmm. Yeah. and not to give everything completely away. There wasn't much there, but basically we have a mutual interest in a certain band that we were kind of, we were just kind of jamming with together. And unfortunately things didn't work out in my personal life at that time shortly after. So I had to stop doing that with him and another person, a bass player. Yep. Um, Tony. Yeah, Tony. Mentioned. Yep. yep. And, um, but I, I thought it'd be so cool to have him on because you mentioned social media presence and he has this gym that he mentioned and these ropes are so cool. And I watch that and think, man, that's got to hurt like hell trying to use your arms with that and feeling sore the next day. But this guy's like the million dollar man, basically, I imagine, <laughs> because I don't know how he can do that all the time. But getting back to the first thing you said, he's a family man. You live out that direction. Mm -hmm. And I guess you said musician too. So let me ask you this. I okay. met you since that's how I met you. Let's start with that. Sure. When did you start drumming? Oh man. Um, so it's, it's such a stereotypical story. Um, just, you know, very, very young hitting on pots and pans, you know, that sort of thing. Mom, you know, basically let me, uh, so to speak. Um, and then when I got into grade school, I think it was third grade, I believe if I remember right. When you first have band, oh, yeah. um, yep. I wanted to play the trumpet and, uh, my mom was like, no, 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 no. Let's, let's play drums. I think drums would be fun. And I said, uh, okay, that'll be fun. And then, I mean, it just erupted. Um, and then from there on out, I mean, I was hooked more or less, you know, um, but she kind of had it, had it pegged a little bit. So from the time I was born, literally, um, she has bought me a drum every year for the Christmas tree every year, every year. Yep. So I have one from 1975, which I was born. I'm old. Um, so <laughs> from 1975 all the way, all the way up. And, um, it's not that much older than me. So, um, so that, you know, that being said, she kind of had it pegged in the very beginning with no, no clue or, or, or forethought to that. But, um, and then I got my first drum set when I was in fifth grade, fourth grade, no fourth grade. Um, and then again, you know, bought a, a used, a, a crappy used Rogers drum, half Rogers, half Ludwig okay. um, drum kit when I was a freshman in high school. Yeah. Um, started playing in, you know, metal bands. We were trying to play Metallica and, you know, you name oh, yeah. it's such, you know, like I said, such a stereotypical story for somebody in, in my age group, you know? Um, and then, uh, uh, as I, as I got into college, I got into, into jazz and, and, um, played in the jazz ensemble in Muscatine, the community college. And, um, and it was just awesome. And so I continued on with that and then got accepted into Belmont University. And I was there for two years um, as a jazz performance major. And then um, I, it, 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 it taught me a, a, a great lesson because it taught me that um, to try and make drums as a living ruined it for me. 
Um, so I was, I was literally playing drums from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to bed and you start to physically break down. My forearms were always sore, oh, elbows yeah, hurt, sure, hands sure. hurt. Um, and I was doing a whole lot of things I didn't care about. You know, I, 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 at the time I was like, I, why do I need to know this cascara pattern? Why do I need to know the difference between a, a mambo and a, and a mamba? Right. Why, why, why do I need to know these things when all I want to do is just be a rock star? Um, and so, uh, I, I finally ended up just dropping out. And, and moving on. Right. And I thought, well, you know, I'll, I'll just continue my, my art and my music somewhere else. And then, sure. um, just kind of, you know, followed my heart, so to speak. And, 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 um, got into some, some touring cover bands, right. Doing local gigs and, and regional stuff and things like that. And did some regional touring and played in this crazy, um, uh, Pink Floyd cover band for a very short time. Yeah. And, um, had a great time, but if I ever hear Pink Floyd again, I'm going to shoot myself. Oh yeah. I have learned to not like Pink Floyd dramatically. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure that some people will probably be, hate me for that, but, oh, yeah. but I mean, I mean, Pink Floyd, not okay with me anymore. Um, and Brian, brown eyed girl, if I ever have to play that song again, I will <laughs> dig my own eyeballs out with a spork. Um, <laughs> a spork, <laughs> a spork, spork even so we can claw and scoop at the same time. Exactly. Yes. Um, but yeah, so, so, and then from there I just got into, uh, I moved, moved out in the Chicago area, um, opened a gym up, up there and, um, I shouldn't say gym, fitness facility. Fitness facility. Um, okay. yep. And then got into some local, uh, local bands. I played in a, in a couple of different cover bands, filled in for some other people that I knew that were great drummers. Um, and where, where, where I learned a lot from them. I actually learned way more from them than I learned in school, I think, uh, because I loved it. Sure. Um, in school, I just didn't like it anymore. They, they kind of wrecked it for me. So I kind of, um, got away from it, but anyway, um, and then did, did some original stuff as well. Kept recording some albums and doing some different things like that. And then, um, eventually moved back to Iowa, um, where I've been struggling with, you know, getting, um, getting together with great musicians and stuff like that. It's just, it's tough. It's very tough. Yeah. Um, yep. um, because the, you know, it's just like a marriage. Any band is like a marriage and you start trying to get with people that you can trust and they're going to show up and they're going to you know, do all those things and they don't and you struggle and you get pissy with one another and all that. And, um, and with Tony, the guy you mentioned earlier, um, I love tone. Tone is the best. Yeah, um, sure. He goes by tone diggity, by tone the way. Diggity, yeah. Um, <laughs> isn't it Tony Hernandez? Great yes, dude. Yes. I, I love the guy. Um, he's yeah. like a brother to me, honestly. Um, we got together kind of by happenstance, um, in a band called Nile Seraph and it was a metal band. Um, and, um, due to my, my cousin, my cousin was the guitar player and that's, and when I moved back to Iowa, he said, Hey, we're looking for a drummer. Do you want to do this thing? Um, and it was fun. I mean, we, we had a great time. Um, but, uh, the chemistry of the band just didn't hold together. Sure. Um, even though they had been a band before long before I, I was with them. Um, but it ended up being that the dissension of the band was so deep at that point and that it split apart and then tone and I stuck together. Um, and now we've tried a different, a couple of different iterations of bands to make something work because we're both just craving to, to play again and, sure. and, and, and be on stage and, and interact with people in that way and yep. things like that. And, and not just have it be an, an art form in your, in your, uh, in your house, like you know? the original music. Is the, that what you're saying? Right, or, yeah. Are you looking at cover still? Or are you back um, to originals? We, we, we're, we're not opposed to either. We okay. continue to work on, on our original stuff mainly because the fact that it's, it's art, right? It's the art that you want to do. You want to express yourself. You want to have all that stuff. Um, but I mean, just to be on stage and stuff like that, I would play in a cover band. I, I could care less at this point. Sure. Um, as long as it was an enjoyable cover band. I mean, I'm, I, I don't want to go out and play, play country tunes, um, necessarily. I mean, I have no problem with country music. Country music is great. Um, it's just that that's not where my heart lives. Sure. Um, and I'd love to be, you know, my, my, my mainstay is prog metal. I mean, and prog rock, you know, dream theater, of course, you know, again, I was, was going to ask if that was still a thing because I remember I asked you and you said dream theater. And then if you saw the guy's kit, you'd understand. I mean, oh, when I saw your kid, I, I mean, how many, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a, I don't want to say monstrosity. That sounds evil or awful, but it, I mean, it's, it's huge. Remember seeing it. Yeah. There's how many, how many pieces are you using currently? Oh my gosh. Three, uh, eight, 10, 12, 15. 15. Right. So try to picture your, your, uh, your dining room. Maybe let's, let's not say it's going to be, you know, your living room, but let's say you've got a room in your house that's, you know, it's, it's pretty decent sized, but maybe, you know, you don't use it very often. Why not put a 15 piece drum kit in there instead? That's what I say. My wife is very tolerant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I love her to death and, and she, yeah. she is honestly, but she's also a musician. I mean, she, she went to conservatory for oboe and, and flute and, um, ended up unfortunately blowing out her, her soft palate. Oh, okay. In school. Um, and apparently that's fairly common, um, to, for you to have physical breakdown like that, which 
obviously I just mentioned it before, you know, uh, sure, sure. and, and hers was, uh, her soft palate blew out and that's something you just can't get over. Right. Cause when you're trying to forcibly blow into this, this horn, uh, and the back of your throat is constantly flapping. Yeah. It does not good for it over time. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing, no prevention, like more water. Or, I don't know. Certain nope. like, you know, once you blow it, it's blown. <sighs> wow. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so she's very, very tolerant because you know she also loves to express herself in the, in that way, but she can't anymore. So what's she doing now as an alternative? Nothing. Uh, appreciating her husband, who yeah. is a fantastic drummer. Yeah, she she loves to. Uh, thank you, by the way. Um, but yeah, she loves to to have the bands over and practice, and and she loves to hear it, and, cool. and you know. That's so cool to have that kind of support, not just yeah. because of the drum kit, but also because of practices. And typically with drummers, you know, and this is no offense, but you know, usually practice, you go to the drummer. It's not, yeah. it's not like you go to the singer. Mm -hmm. It's not like you go to the singer <laughs> where, you know, they got like a microphone and that's it. It's, the world doesn't revolve around the singer. It doesn't. That's so weird. They might think it does. Just kidding. All my singer friends that are watching. I'm not kidding. He can be kidding. I'm not kidding. I've dealt with too many. I've dealt we'll with talk too many. more off camera. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, um, that's, that's so cool. I mean, at least she appreciates you and is okay with you having the practices there at your place and everything, yeah. which is great too. And so I, I backtracking a little bit cause you kind of gave me everything at once, which is okay. Totally cool. The, uh, so you, you were in college, uh, Musk, Musk community college, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're taking, you were in a jazz uh, lessons. Is that what you said? Or jazz, jazz class? ensemble, jazz ensemble. Yep. I'm sorry. Yep. Um, it's okay. so I'm trying to recover or, or think back here is that, uh, what was that one thing you said? Like, why do I need to know a cascadia or what was it? Yeah, cascara, a cascara pattern. Yeah. Um, so, what is a cascara pattern? So, a lot of these, a lot of these things, um, when you when you get into a music school, um, and, and it's it's kind of by popularity, I guess. Some of it, some of it, and some of it is just learning independence through different patterns and things like this. You're saying this, the things you're learning are based on popularity. Kind of, kind of, yeah. Um, because at the time, um, anything that was like, you know, Afro, Afro Cuban, Afro Caribbean, um, you know, Brazilian, things like that, those sort of uh, world styles were very popular at the time. And so everybody was trying to learn these, these patterns. Um, and obviously, when you grow up in the United States and things like that, you don't have those sort of um, like traditional sounds. You just don't have them. Sure. Um, you know, our, our, our traditional sounds were somewhere between Johnny Cash and, you know, um, for drumming. Yeah, right, right, right. For that style. Right. Basic 4-4 four, four or... Right, right. Basic 4-4. Four, four. Anything that you could dance to. Sure. Um, yeah. And when we have some waltzes and things like, yeah, but that's that stuff, it doesn't really show up that much anymore. Yeah. Um, what were waltzes in? What time signature were those usually in? 4-4 four, four, or are they in four, but usually in threes. I mean, they... they oh, Because they, okay. everything's in a, in, a, in a feel of three. Yeah. Because the waltz is in a, in a, in a, in a three-step. Sure. Um, but... They, they just try and, and we try to introduce all of this sort of thing because with the fact that we don't have it traditionally. So you have to learn it somehow. And, um, and why we had to learn those. I don't know. Did you, so I may, I don't know if you remember what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of like a teacher, but for, um, the joke usually on the podcast and in case you've seen it, it's like, I'm a janitor for McDonald's. Yes. But, uh, you mean you're not? I'm not. I mean, I am. <laughs> but usually, as a teacher, for what field I'm in, though, I find that if you're a bad teacher, or I shouldn't say bad teacher. If you're not, if you're not getting it across, so I'm wondering, like for you, because you're bored, mm -hmm. was it because maybe your teacher wasn't uh, giving you what you needed? Well, so I had multiple teachers. Oh, you did. Um, I did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I just, just, I don't know why I assumed it'd just be one guy, but oh I guess man. it makes sense if you had multiple styles, you had to oh, go yeah, to yeah. different teachers, yeah, yeah. but all that was in Muscatine. No, no, no. This is in, uh, uh, I'm sorry. That was at Belmont. In, oh, that was in, the Belmont. Yep. Okay. I'm it's sorry. It's in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm sorry. Um, when I was in, in, um, Muscatine, things were way easier. Um, oh, okay. I, I didn't have to learn any of that. Uh, I had a, I had a drum instructor and he was a great guy and I, I, I hope he's not watching this because I, I'm <laughs> slipping on his name and he was a great dude. Well, you share it. Maybe he'll watch it eventually. It maybe he might, maybe. Um, and I, I and I, I'm, I'm ashamed of myself for not remembering what his name is. Um, uh, but he was awesome. And we, we, we were going over a lot of jazz stuff and he was just very, um, intolerant of me not being able to feel, to have it feel like jazz. Sure. Um, and that, and it kind of made me obsessive about it, right? Because of everything to me was very rock oriented. So everything was sure. very static and um, very linear, which it, I've kind of come back to that, but I'll get to that here in a minute. <laughs> um, but so I, I became obsessed with this whole jazz feel and everything had to feet, had to, had to have the swing to it and kind of like be very mobile, right? The, the feel had to be very mobile and, um, instead of, instead of, uh, very linear and, 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 static. Sure. And, um, and that was really hard for me to do. Um, 
because anybody that knows me knows that even in, in fitness or anything else, if you actually, if you look anything on my social media, you'll notice that I have, I, I talk about patterns all the time. Okay. Right. And whether that's, you know, metabolic patterns or whether that's, you know, physical patterns or whatever. And so I'm very pattern oriented and I always have been since I was little, 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 maybe I'm autistic. Could I be autistic? I mean, you might be, but I doubt it. I doubt <laughs> it. You just really care. Um, a little OCD. I always call it CDO, but you know, whatever. Eh, well, you know. Alphabetical order there. Um, but yeah, so so everything is very pattern oriented to me. So trying to not have the static pattern and, and try to make it um, organic in some way is was odd to me. Yeah. Um, and it's still odd to me, honestly. I, uh, so uh, is that what really what the big distractor was then? You're trying to, it seemed odd to you, and that's why you kind of gravitated away from it then? Yes. Just kind of bored with it and not yep. what you wanted because you weren't excited. But then when you're finally with people that, you know, you want to play music with, and then you got better. Right. I, I, I think that's, I kind of think that's true with me to a degree too. Not mm -hmm. like I'm trying to jump over to myself personally, but I feel like playing guitar since high school, my primary instrument Let's face it, my basically my only instrument. I just keep all this other stuff around just as, you know, like a museum around here. Makes yourself feel better. I do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but when I started, though, I mean, I started in high school, and I it was a piano slash guitar class. And I remember that the piano I got bored of, so I just gravitated towards the guitar past mm -hmm. that class. And I kept going, but it was always just one of those things where I really wasn't progressing until finally that first band and that's where things were clicking and I'm happy because I'm doing things with other people. And it's, yeah, yeah. and then all of a sudden I'm improving because I'm having to learn not just riffs or parts of a song. I'm learning not just the opening riff for Enter Sandman, but, you know, then playing the whole song. Right. Right. And not that I played that in a band, Enter Sandman, by the way. Metallica, for all you kids that don't know what that is out there. You got to know what that is, right? You have to know what that is. <sighs> Wasn't it in like Guitar Hero or something like that? Or well, they just released a new album band? last year, right? Did they? Yeah, it was fantastic. Was it good? Oh, it was great. Oh, yeah, I it, really didn't know. Yeah, they're finally starting to sound kind of like they did, just more modern. Oh, okay. Yeah, which they had a weird, you know, with the whole like St. Anger thing and all that. That Death it, Magnetic was okay. Right. It, they were okay. starting to come back. Yeah. And yes. now they have, I think it's Hardwired, I think. It's really, whatever. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 it, yeah. So it's fantastic. It's great. I didn't know. Yeah, so. Great. Is it wrong of me to assume? I know you're never supposed to assume anything in oh, life, man. but I always, I, <laughs> <laughs> I think I read this the other day that, uh, um, <laughs> some eighties band released a single or something like that the other day. And, uh, I can't remember which one it was. I would okay. want to look it up to m make sure who it was. Sure, I don't sure. want to say guns and roses. It wasn't the Axel slash camp, but it was like one of those other big eighties hair bands. And I, I, they said, Oh, they released a single and stuff. And I'm thinking, who, who is Brett Michaels? Who is that guy? What band was that in? Poison? Yeah, yes, poison. maybe it's Poison. And if you're out there yelling at me in the comments on YouTube, that's fine. I deserve this, but I'm not an <laughs> 80s guy. Um, but yeah, apparently they, they released a new single and I didn't even, typical millennial, I just jumped into the comments to see what people were saying. And they're like, oh, this is crap, awful. He can't sing the way he used to, you know? And I'm like, ugh. That's, so my assumptions happen with other bands like that I actually like unfortunately, like Metallica hmm. um, and even bands that I, I love to death. And I knew when I listened to the last album for like Deftones, uh, one of my favorite bands of all time that I've seen uh, multiple times live. And v I had a VIP backstage thing back in the day for Saturday Night Wrist, mm -hmm. and, which was awesome. But uh, the other last album was totally not what, what, what made it. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I get into that. And what, I don't want to be judgmental, but I feel like I am some pre-judgmental. But uh, I need to check out the new Metallica album. Yeah, it's, it's really good. I need to. I, I enjoy and it. And not just the single or two, but I need to listen to it? Yeah, yeah okay. for sure. For sure. Because I feel like the, the singles... I mean, I, mean, the, the, I, think it was, I think the title track was Hardwired. And it was pretty good. Was that Hardwire Self-Destruct? Yes. Yeah. So I've heard that single before. Yeah. Yep. So that was the single. Maybe that's why I judged. I'm like, maybe I'm going to stay away from this. Yeah. Uh, that song's oh, okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's almost like they're trying too hard at that point. But if you listen to more of the songs on the, on the back end of it. Yes. Which I'm, I'm always, a, I never really like the singles. And I don't know if it's, if it's, maybe that's a psychological thing on my part. It's a single. I don't, I'm not going to like it. Well, it's made for radio. Right. It's made for that. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not made for the person who really. Right. Okay. Yep. Right. And so, um, a lot of them on the back end were, were, were much more what I wanted to hear from them because the death magnetic, magnetic was getting closer. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, but it just wasn't quite where I wanted it to be either. 
you know, yeah, yep. they got back into their aggressiveness and, 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 um, trying to have a statement that wasn't just, you know, radio ready. Sure. You know, um, cause as much as I, as, as, as often as I listen to things like, you know, what was it? Uh, shoot load and reload and whatever. Oh yeah. Very, very radio rock. Very radio rock. Very radio rock. Um, but I mean, in the, in, and they're okay in their own right. Cause I mean, all of us will sell out eventually to a certain money point. Right. Absolutely. And if you would. have a certain number of fans that want that, yes. you're going to give it to them. Okay. Right? So, so total, uh, I feel like I keep in my age group, which is slightly younger than yours. Mm-hmm. I feel like I fall into, it's not that I started listening to Metallica, eighties Metallica, it was '90s Metallica that mm. I started with, so I think a load mm. and reload. I think of like I uh, was it Fuel, mm-hmm. was it, was it Whiskey in the Jar? Oh, or no, it was a little bit later, but yes, later. The, the same era. Um, don't tell me because I've got like all these. Uh, bu- 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 sad but true. Or was that on Black? It was on Black. Damn it! But there was there was a a sequel to it. No, The Unforgiven Two. That oh was, yes, there, that's what it was. I like that song. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But that was to to me, and again, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit older. Um, but to me, the, the, those, I like how you lowered your voice. I'm a little bit older. I'm a little bit older. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> to me, the, those albums were their sellout albums. Yeah. Which I mean, and then it's that's kind of a an odd characteristic to give something anyway, right? That, sure. Whatever. I, and 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 I don't mean that necessarily in a negative sense. Yeah. Because again, we'll all sell out to eventually to some to something somewhere. Um, but uh, that to me was kind of less in in what the the first albums had, which was yeah. youth and they were trying to, to, to create something new and something that hadn't been done yet and yeah. that sort of thing. And there was a vibrance to that, right? It's, it, you know, even, which I'm going to take a huge sidestep, but even like the first smashing pumpkins album, oh. um, the first huge uh, fan here. Yeah. The yep. first, um, Pearl jam album. Right. Yeah. And, and those were breakout albums because they were different than something that was happening. Mm. And then as the, those bands gain popularity, their, their, their sound changes. And again, mm-hmm. I'm a huge pumpkins fan. Still love the pumpkins. Me too. I've seen them probably 13 or 14 times live. Only one time, unfortunately, because I saw them when they got back together like 10 years ago and they mm. played at the Davenport. Yeah. The Mark. It wasn't even the Mark. It was at, um, gosh, the first time they toured together since way back in the day. The Adler. The Adler oh my Theater. Gosh. Okay. I saw them at the Adler Theater. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes, I did. And it was awesome. They, and they played so many great songs. And But yes, I'm with you. You saw yeah. them 13 times? I'm yeah, so I've jealous. Seen, I've seen them so many times. Oh my God. So in my, I followed them all over the place. I don't know if you know this, but I sell my soul and I do solo acoustic stuff too. Sure. On occasion. <laughs> yep. And I, I sing Tonight, Tonight, and Today. And I would love to learn um, Mayonnaise or Soma or something, you yeah. know. Yeah, they're great I, band. I, you know, I, I love all that Smashing pumpkin stuff. Have you sure. heard the new album? I have not because you know what it is. This this is what it falls into. It's the exact same thing. It's like the Metallica thing. I think, okay, new album, you know, I hear a little snippet or something there. I don't actually invest in the whole album itself. And then I'm left. I feel like an asshole right now. I really do. No, the new album is great. It really is great. Is it Jimmy Chamberlain back on the drums? Yes. (sighs) Yes. Because remember that time where they lost him and then it's like, it's like all electronic beats. Yes. Was that uh, Ava Adore or was that that album? Yep. And it's just like, I mean, I loved, I I loved Adore or was it called Adore, Adore. that one popular one? Yep. I love that song, but then it's like, it's just like I lost it from there. Even when they came back with a drummer and it wasn't Jimmy, right? Was there like an album? It wasn't Jimmy? Yeah, there was an album. It wasn't, it wasn't Jimmy. Then they, they brought him back again for Clockwork. No, it was Zeitgeist? Clockwork. Mm-hmm. Was that the one without him though? No, that was with him. That was with him. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then they and then they they came back. I, I think I think I'm getting this right. I may be completely off. But then That's they okay. came out with with a, a younger kid, and it, it was just they were calling it Smashing Pumpkins, but it was nobody was original except Billy Corgan. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And then they had that album Oceana or something. Or oh whatever. yes, yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. No. 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 You're right. Yep. And yes. now they have the new one, and and their the original lineup is back. The bass player is not. Well, well, she is not right. Right, right. So there, I've been, I've been trying to keep up with this, and it's, it's been crazy because Billy Corgan is very dramatic, right? Yes. Um, and so she, I'm trying to remember if she did recordings or did not do recordings, and she's not touring or she is touring. There's some sort of combination of that. I'm pretty and sure she's, she's not trying, touring, so she, maybe she recorded. Maybe that's what it is. But I know that that there was a huge fight over it, and there, it's been very public, right? Mm-hmm. It's been very public, and um, and I don't think there's anything legal yet yet but with those guys it always kind of 
boils down to something like that. But, um, but anyway, so yeah, but, but Jimmy Chamberlain being back is like, to me is, it, yeah. Cause he's, he's absolutely one of my top five favorite drummers. The dude is incredible. Incredible. Um, yeah. If you don't, if you don't, you're right. If you don't know who Jimmy Chamberlain is, go watch a couple of his playthroughs on whatever. Yeah. He's awesome. Anything. His, his own project, his own project is very fusion jazz oriented. I haven't seen that. Yeah. It's, it's a, uh, it's actually called the uh, Jimmy Chamberlain complex. Mm. Great. It, great stuff. It's not traditional rock it's not what you would expect if you're expecting the pumpkins um it's very fusion i feel like without billy corgan i would never expect anything i feel like if if billy corgan isn't in it then i would never expect anything like the pumpkins that's how i feel because it should yeah even though jimmy chamberlain he's he's very um distinct as a drummer i feel like still if i don't have billy corgan in the mix and his writing on guitars and all that stuff i I just feel like it wouldn't be yeah it wouldn't be pumpkins at all to me right so that's something i'll check out though because i love jimmy chamberlain here's the deal i respect and i know a lot of drummers i am not a drummer first second not third maybe fourth (laughs) 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 maybe fifth i also have a dulcimer so maybe it's like sixth a dulcimer might be like fifth and then drums are sixth. but you know what a dulcimer is yeah i do i've had one of those it was actually on that room i just didn't take it out to show you but um yeah so i if I had to give you my top five drummers off the top of my head, mm-hmm. can I share those with you? Yeah, absolutely. We're spending a lot of time on drums, but I'm okay with it because this is awesome. Um, Danny Carey. I'm going to start with, because I'm a huge Tool fan. Um, also, let's throw Jimmy Chamberlain in there because he's one of those people that I just, I, I respect so much and watching him drum and impressed by the, his style. Mm-hmm. I know it may seem weird. I know I'm probably going to get some slack on that. Um, Chris Adler from Lamb of God. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a huge metal guy. Sure, sure, sure. It's huge. Oh, like, yeah. Huge metal I guy. I love metal. Yep. Um, so I'm at Danny Carey, Jimmy Chamberlain, um, and then Chris Adler. And then I'm going to go with... Oh, man, it's getting tough because I don't want to say the wrong... I don't want to say it's the wrong thing, but at the same time, I feel like there's so many good drummers. And I don't want to be like Portnoy or I don't want to be like... Because they're great. Sure. They're, they're fucking great, awesome, great, right? Yeah. And even the bands he's done past Dream Theater that he's been in, at, like what was that one that he's in with those uh, with Sheehan and Winery, uh, winery Dogs? Yes, that. awesome. Another drummer friend of mine, Chad Grimm, who's in, who has not been on the podcast, but I've known him forever. Uh, he's he introduced me to them, the Winery Dogs. That, that was that was cool too. But um, so I got top three so far. Give me your top five. While I'm trying to think of my other two. Um, number one for me is definitely Mike Mangini. Oh yeah, from now the new yeah now the, the new yeah, dream now the, yeah yes yeah um which you know I, I was always a Portnoy fan he was never my top five but you know I've always oh, he wasn't I've, yeah I've, okay. I've I've always loved uh, how he views music yes um but I always felt like the dude just overplays like beyond you know he just kind of I always I always make jokes about it like he rubs his musical genitalia all over everything <laughs> and just tries to make it the but, Mike Portnoy show I mean is that him just trying to be like that's like fitting because it's dream theater. I'm not saying that's the way the rest of the band members are in dream theater, right. but is that like to, f- is that why you think that was, or you think it's just because that's his personality? His personality. Okay. I- I've met him a couple of times. Um, I've seen him in, in multiple well, drum, awesome. drum clinics and things like this in situations like that. I also saw him, uh, when I lived in Chicago, uh, he came to, um, dirty Nelly's a couple of times. Yeah. One was with the, the who project that they did where it was him and, uh, um, Oh shoot. The singer from extreme, uh, Gary Sharon. Yeah. And they did that, that, um, the who project. Um, and he came in there and, and one of my buddies who's also a drummer, um, was the drum tech for it. And he treated my buddy incredibly poorly. At one point he broke a piece of equipment on stage. Um, my buddy runs out there to, to, trying to fix the piece. And as he's trying to fiddle with this broken piece and trying to make it work for him, um, he starts, you know, playing the part of whatever anyway and ended up kicking greg twice kicking him like physically Literally kicking him physically yeah kicking and then him. making jokes about it on in a microphone like oh, really i was like dude oh, why you gotta man. be like that right uh and so I, i've seen too many situations like that in in reality and kind of watched him just kind of be very self-important in that way and i kind of feel like if you're in a situation where you're where all eyes are on you yes you can't act like that. No, absolutely right? you, you not. You cannot. Um, but but anyway, um, so uh, 
but I, like I said, I've always loved Dream Theater. Like they've yep. always been my favorite band, but he's never really been my favorite drummer. So Mike Mangini though, for sure. Yeah, for yep. sure. Okay. Uh, I mean, I've watched his career all throughout. I mean, the dude is fantastic. Um, as a matter of fact, this, the, they just released an album today. It just came out today. Dream Theater did. I didn't know. I yeah. knew that I knew. So I saw John Petrucci like uh, advertising a new signature guitar he came yep. out with. I'm assuming that's tying in with the new album. Then. Absolutely. Oh, it's tricky, tricky. Yeah. Yes. And the new album's fantastic. Um, I've and, not and, heard it. And, and uh, he's been on uh, Mike, uh, Mangini, um, who I've also, I also know on, on a personal level, um, which probably is part of that. Um, I flew out to Boston a couple of different times and took lessons with him. What? Yeah. Um, what? He came out to Chicago a couple of times um, to do some stuff with the drum pad, you know. Um, is that a big it, drum store up there? It was. It was. They are not anymore. Rip. Yeah. Where were they at? Um, they were in Palatine. Okay. Um, and uh, Victor Salazar ended up leaving there and opening his own shop downtown. Um, and he was he was kind of the heart and soul of the drum pad. And yeah. then when he moved, it all just kind of like fell apart, I guess. Which is unfortunate because the, the place was great. And they had a lot of drum clinics and a lot of different things like that. Uh, they just kind of fell apart. Um, but he came down for several things for that. And I met him through that technically the first time and then started flying out. And so... Um, and he's an incredibly intelligent person and, and, and an incredibly giving guy, right? Just you know, giving of his time and, and everything else. But um, uh, I, I feel like he's he's finally grown into the band, like the past couple of albums. He's accepted? Yes. Like, I kind of feel like in the first album, they weren't, I mean, they were his parts, obviously, and things like that, but he wasn't really being himself inside of the music. Does that make sense? Like, the music was already written. He came, came in and, you know. He was trying to basically replace at that point. Right. Right. And that's it. Right. And I even, mean, and he said very openly in, in, um, in a lot of social media and things like that, that he was, he was trying to maintain Portnoy's parts yep. so that the, the parts were, that, that were, that were integral to the song were still there, mm-hmm. right? even though he felt they were not right or were right or whatever is, was irrelevant. It was, it existed for him. Can we stop and respect one thing for a minute? Sure. Think of him trying to step in and fill shoes, regardless if you think Portnoy is in the top five or not. Right trying to fill those shoes. Oh God. Even the, even though you're super fucking top Mike Mangini, right? Right. And I mean, that's gotta be an undertaking in Absolutely. itself. It has to be. And that reminds me of my fourth best drummer, top drummer, but I'm going to wait till you're done though. So okay. yes, keep going. Um, but yeah, so uh, he's, he's been awesome through all that, but I really felt like he didn't grow into the band until this album. Cause now that as I'm listening to this album, now you can hear more of the, the way that he thinks you can you start to hear the the mangini isms and and or however you want to state that right you can you can hear it now i'm like okay now he's starting to make himself part of the band instead of playing to the just playing to the songs yeah and so now he's playing to the songs and creating new interesting stickings of different patterns and things like this that are that are more him more him instead of trying to f- fill those shoes right yes right. that's exciting so it is exciting um, you know what's Miles. great about these podcasts? No, you know what's great about these podcasts is I'm going to look back on this when I'm prepping it to upload it. I'm going to look at this and I'm going to be take all these notes and I'm going to be doing like for the next, uh, for the next like three weeks, I'm going to be listening to all this music, whether it's new Smashing Pumpkins or Dream Theater or Metallica, right. Metallica <laughs> 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 with an open mind, mind you. Right, right, right. So it's thanks to situations like this. Um, or else I'm just kind of like dead to it, unfortunately. So this is cool. So Mike Mangini, that's yeah. one. Did you say second one already? I haven't said it yet. Not yet. Please. I love how he's building each one up and giving a reason for it where I'm just kind of rambling and, you know, going sure. for these. So now, Jimmy Chamberlain is definitely number two. Is he? Yep. He nice. is. Um, Cause uh, the, uh, again, we're back to that whole feel thing. Yeah. He has his own thing. So unique. And it's unrelentless. For me, like, when I listen to it and I'm not even a drummer first, but I hear it. I'm like, I can tell, yeah. you know, it's him. It's always him. Yes. Um, you know, and, and, it, and it doesn't matter if he's in the pumpkins or whatever it is. He just, he sounds like him always. Oh, I also need to listen to the fusion stuff that you were talking yeah, about. Cause I have not heard any of that before. It's great. Okay. Um, so he's number two, um, number three, definitely Danny Carey. Um, I love the guy, you know, the yes. dude is just, uh, again, somebody who's definitely sounds like him all the time. He reminds me of you. Can I tell you why? Built like a brick shit house, works out probably. He's like a muscular dude, isn't he? Oh yeah, he's a big dude. A big dude. Six three, six four. Big. Like that, I mean, he? wears like a lot big, of basketball jerseys. Guy. You know, big guy. Showing off the guns all the time. Always. <laughs> Always. Um, Keep yeah, going. <laughs> but, yeah, but meticulous. I mean, the guy is meticulous. Oh yeah. To a fault. Yes. Um, and so that, uh, and I appreciate that. Just that meticulousness. Yes. Um, which is. I, I, I equate him actually more to how I deal with fitness, which is, uh, I can relate back to that later. We're um, going to talk about but, fitness too. Yeah. 
But um, but yeah, so he would definitely be my number three. Um, number four. Hmm. Can I jump into my four? Yeah, sure. If, if you need a moment. Yeah, sure. So I don't know if you've heard of Josh Freeze before. Oh, yeah. So earlier we were talking about filling people's shoes. Yeah. And Josh Freeze to me, it's funny because I knew him as original drummer first, mm -hmm. but then I realized he's drummed for like a gajillion other people. Yes. Josh Freeze, when I saw him the first time, it was a perfect circle. Mm -hmm. That was 13th step tour back in the day mm -hmm. uh, with perfect circle. Then I saw him with nine inch nails. That's not his original stuff. That's him covering, of course, because, you know, he toured with Nine Inch Nails forever. And he was, I couldn't, the funny thing is I didn't remember him with a perfect circle mm -hmm. when I saw him. But when I saw Nine Inch Nails, I saw Nine Inch Nails twice. And, oh my God, like the stuff that they were covering and what they were doing and what he was doing, mm. it like opened up my eyes so much to the more the drumming side of that that I never experienced before. And Josh Freeze, he's drummed for everybody. Yeah. And Devo. including uh, original band wise, oh, Devo. Yeah. And also a perfect circle, one album or two albums, two albums, a perfect mm -hmm. circle, um, the first two. And then um, what's the other band that he did original music for too, Josh Freeze? I feel like Devo, perfect circle, and there was another one too. Regardless though, Josh Freeze, a guy that's drummed for absolutely everybody and anybody, whether it's studio or touring, whether it's recent touring that I remember seeing him, Sting, Weezer, Sublime with Rome, I'm thinking like the past five years, even it's like yeah. a new year. It's yeah, a new, incredible. it's a new band. And these are different genres, right? This isn't just like rock and metal. Mm -hmm. This is him covering every single, you know, genre that he has to, there's some sure. pop in like the studio recording stuff too. Right. So Josh freeze for me, um, definitely just as a, wow, you know, as a cover band musician only, I respect original musicians, like Ethan here, but for me as a cover band guy and having to cover all these different types of music and nineties and newer for me, but only, and I'm like pop rock. And I kind of feel like I respect people that can do that, can yeah. fill other yeah. people's shoes sure. and replicate when they can. So that's my number four. Do you know what your fourth one is? Um, yeah, it'd have to be Gavin Harrison. Um, and he's, uh, again, he's, uh, incredibly multifaceted. Um, he's mo mainly known for uh, porcupine tree. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And he's recently been doing a thing with a band called Pineapple Thief, I think. Don't know about that one. Uh, also great. It's the same sort of genre of, of, of music for sure. Sure. Uh, but he did a bunch of stuff that was big band as well. Um, okay. Right, so again, multifaceted. I mean, the guy's, the guy's incredible. He, if you get a chance, look up, uh, he did a, a, a like a drum solo almost um, with the house band on David Letterman. Oh. And it's been obviously a long time ago, right? Because David yeah. Letterman's been... But... but um, and I think it was called something with chickens or whatever. I don't remember anyway. Um, but the, the video is, is incredible. And he did this big long solo and, and, uh, the house band filled in for the, the big band part. Yeah. And it was very, you know, big band esque, but it, it was fantastic. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's not really his mainstay. He does all this like, you know, kind of prog rock, you know, prog metal sort of, sort of thing. But again, he's another guy that's filled in for everybody. He plays on, you know, Broadway and different things like this too. Okay. Yep. The guy's, the guy's incredible. Um, you know, just in, in, in general. But um, yeah, so that's my number four and number five, okay. just out of out of influence, and I have to I have to list him just out of influence because I I, I love the guy, um, who I also had a chance to meet one time, uh, in Chicago, um, but uh, Charlie Benante from Anthrax. Oh yeah, yeah, and um, so obviously in the age group I am again, you know, Anthrax was like a big deal when I was in high school, and so being in metal bands and things in high school, uh, he was definitely an influence of mine. Yeah. And uh, at that time, I'd never heard anybody that was that fast, especially for like double bass and things like this. Sure, yeah, so fast. Um, was I mean, if so, if we help me out really quick. Mm -hmm. So in the '80s, where did double bass really take off? What was the first band that really took it and incorporated it more than any other band? Can you remember? For, so for me, um, where I heard it at the the first time, and it just completely blew me away, was uh, Hot for Teacher, Van Halen. Oh, they did that. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that that was the first one that really kind of blew me away. Um, but that being said, um, when I was in high school, um, you know, the, the the double bass thing was was just all metal to me. Um, and in, in but I was also into the grunge. You know, so you hear you know Pearl Jam and things sure, like sure. those kind of the bands that came very important. I mean, Allison yep. Chains. Yeah. Um, but there was all these guys went from the instead of having big drum kits, they went to these little tiny drum kits and were trying to do more with less, sort of. Yeah. Was that a sound thing, a tone thing? I don't know, actually. I kind of feel like it was more like we're trying to be garage bands sort mm. of sort of thing, right? Because it was the grunge mm. thing, right? So, the, you know, that's that was kind of their shtick. 
Sure. So, so to speak, no Nirvana and, and whatnot. Um, but um, that being said, I saw Van Halen around in there, and this would have been oh, 5150 maybe. I can't remember which album it was, but you I went saw to, them. I went to see them in concert. Where at? Uh, and this would have been the Mark. It would have been the Mark. Yeah, the Mark. When it was called the Mark called Kids. The Mark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then it was I Wireless, and yes. now Tax Slayer. Did I miss one in between? Maybe. It's called Tax Slayer Center now. I didn't even know that's what it was called now. You didn't. Oh no, yeah. I, I haven't been there in a long time. It's called the Tax Slayer Center. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So keep talking. Go for it. Anyway, so yeah, I saw them, and he did this big drum solo, and. Um, he uh, at one point he played the the double kick so fast that it literally with the ambience of the room and everything it sounded yes. like a note it was like whoa it was just one note and i was completely floored i mean my head shook my chest shook i mean it was just incredible and i became obsessed at that point because like that was the most incredible thing i've ever seen yeah so oddly enough with all this these crazy drummers that we keep talking about and all this you know these yeah. overly fantastic drummers um which I'm not saying that Alex Van Halen is not incredible. The dude is incredible and yeah. incredibly influential as well. How about an incredible music family? Absolutely. Eddie yeah. and his kid yeah, playing absolutely. bass yeah, and stuff is, like that. His kid's crazy, right? I mean, eh, anyway. Wolf, right? Yeah. 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 But, um, but tax slayer. Oh, tax slayer. Yeah. Yeah. They changed it again. That's crazy. What, what is that? Eh, is it's that a actually company? a legit company. Really? Yep. But here's the deal. I never heard of them prior to this, but now. I mean, you definitely remember it. I mean, how oh, unique yeah. of a name is Tax Slayer, right? Yeah, for sure. But uh, but anyway, so yeah, so so Alex Van Halen and it became incredibly, um, yeah. So so from there, I went back to Charlie Benante because again, I I just never heard anybody that was that fast at the time, especially at the time. Yeah. yeah, yep. And uh, I got I got to see them live too at one point when I was living in Chicago, and it was this tiny little, you know, podunk town out in the middle outside of Chicago. What was Chicago it called? Area. Do you remember? I can't remember. I've seen a lot of shows up in that area before. Oh my gosh. What was it? What was the town? And it was a tiny little bar. And I swear to God, there was like a hundred, 150 people in the place. Yeah. And I randomly caught it on, on, I think it was in the reader, like randomly. And I was like, that's, that's playing tomorrow. I'm, I'm going to go tomorrow. And I just randomly just took off that's and, awesome, by myself. Though. Yeah. And which is also weird, right? Cause you go to a concert. That's anyway. all right. Whatever. Um, yeah. Um, but went to it and, uh, and I mean, it was, it was fantastic. I, I, they were incredible and it was 150 people and they still played like, you know, gangbusters. It was incredible. Um, so yeah, but, uh, and that's my, that's my top five. I, I and of course that the, the, the back, you know, four and five usually adjust, you know, here and there, depending on what album has caught my attention or, you know, what's, what's kind of happened recently, but for sure. the most part. Lars yeah. is not in the top five yet. I'm just saying. No. Yeah, I love <laughs> Lars, and and <laughs> so I will. I will say this. Saint Anger, sir. <laughs> I will say this. You know, um, Lars has been an incredibly influential drummer, right? From from an influence standpoint, sure. there's been very few drummers that have influenced more people than Lars. Yes, but from a from a technical standpoint, I mean, the, yes. he's not that great. Um, yeah, unfortunately, and and I and I'm not saying that out of hatred, right? Because I think that he deserves every bit of, of fame that he's true, gotten. True, true. Yep. And I think it's really unfortunate that people pick on him. Um, but most of the people I hear pick on him are not drummers. That's me. <laughs> right? And they're like, oh, <laughs> Lars, this and ew, you know, what a crap. He was the worst part of the No, no, no I'm not, not I'm not case. like that. I'm not that bad. Right, but, right. But, you know, I just tease. I tease. Yeah. I think he's a great drummer. When I saw him live, too, uh, with that, the Death Magnetic Tour, mm -hmm. admittedly, the only time I've seen him live. Anyway, um... He always does it at, at the end of every song where he stands up and he's like, you know, finishing out the song and hitting mm -hmm. on the cymbals and walking around the kit. And it's like he's more he's trying to be a showy kind of drummer at the same time. So I appreciate the entertainment side of it mm -hmm. with him, at least when I saw him. So he doesn't have to be Danny Carey, Chris Adler, uh, technical, you know, faster technical in my eyes. Sure. He just he's entertaining. Yeah. You know why he's standing up? Back hurts. Back hurts. <laughs> Yep. How he's, did I guess that? Uh, <laughs> and again, we're back to the physical fitness end of this. Yes. But yeah, his hip flexors are so tight because he has he has kind of crappy posture. How old is he? You and, think? Oh, he's got to be in his he's got to be in his fifties by now. Is he? I don't know. He has to be. But yeah, he's got he's got poor posture. Yeah. Um, plays a lot of double bass stuff, and yeah. and because of the technique, him sitting so low and stuff like his hip flexors get tight. I guarantee it. And so he has to stand up to loosen his hip flexors and loosen his low back. 
Never would have thought of it until I had Ethan in here. Every single time. And that's why you see him stand up constantly. Uh, the, he the, did at the, the end of every song. Yeah. The S&M tour, the S&M thing I did, the video. Way back before that? Way back, yeah. If you watch if you watch it, every single song he stands up and he puts his foot up on the stool and stretches his hip flexors out. So when he's going like, yeah, it's like him going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah. That's exactly right. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's the shits that get old. Yeah, dude. It is. Getting old is not for sissies. <laughs> I've started Plus doing you're... this recently where I'm like holding stuff away from me. Yes. And my wife has started teasing me. My because, vocals? I, I, not yet, but <laughs> I, I'm I'm very, very, very quickly on my way. Yes. But at least it took me till 43. I'm 43. At least, at least it took me till 43 before it. I'm like, you know, trying to. Well, you said 75 earlier. Yeah, I did say 75. I was born in 83. Oh, wow. You're youngin'. I mean, I, I said I'm not much younger than him. <laughs> He's not much older than me. Almost 10 years, man. Eight years. Well, that's what I'm saying. Almost 10 years. <laughs> that's pretty, that's, that's, you know. But the nice thing, so here's the deal. And maybe this is a good transition. And I'd even give you my fifth drummer. And you know what? Oh, who's your fifth drummer? I'm not even going to tell you. I'm going to save it for <laughs> some other time. <laughs> How about this? We'll have him on another podcast and I'll tell him. It's because I honestly don't remember right now. So getting into the fitness side of things. Sure. He mentioned earlier, and you did, about social media and showing like how you're doing all this with ropes. Um, the cool thing is, is that he owns his own gym that he mentioned earlier, too, when he introduced himself. And owning your own gym has got to be no small feat. Um, and the stuff that you do is incredible, too. And he shares, and I'll make sure and post his Instagram, which is where I follow him. Um, I'll make sure and post that so you can, is it okay to post that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We want people to get involved and see what he's doing and go join his, his gym. Um, I would join, but I'm a lazy motherfucker. <laughs> I am. So I've, I've, uh, like I've talked about on previous podcasts, I've lost a lot of weight in the past year, but it's only because of the fact that I've just changed diet only. Um, I don't have time. I mean, I, I don't, that's an excuse you hear probably all the time. I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Can you show that? But we'll go ahead and this camera will get it. Can, can, can you see it? Yep. So it says, find a way, <laughs> not an excuse. I am that guy. All right. That has the excuse. Um, but in all fairness though, I, I, I find that it's difficult to find time to, to, to work out or exercise. I did lose about 60 pounds in a year mm -hmm. just with diet. That's fantastic. Just with diet. Yeah, it's fantastic. So I, I was trying to talk the diet's to... diet's the hard part, honestly. <sighs> it is. It's the hard first part. month, month and a half, oh, maybe two months. So I talked to Ethan off camera earlier and I was telling you, is that like when I... I feel like we talked about this when I met you and I met him... A, I don't even know how long ago it was. It's been, it's been a year ago. At least a year. It's and a year I mean, ago. I... I don't know if, you know, I, I was bigger and stuff, but I, I found, I reached this point. Have you seen the Jenny, K, Jenny, Jenny Craig commercials back in the day? Where like, I was fat. <laughs> and then yeah. it shows like the before and after. Yes. That's how I felt. Sure, too. sure, sure. Yeah. And um, I made a lot of life changes. So as I've mentioned before, no beer, um, either scotch or tequila. And we keep vodka around. And I do drink that on occasion, which he's drinking. And then also change diet completely. No more fast food. Pack the same basic lunch every day. Wouldn't eat past six o'clock every day, uh, unless it was a clear liquid or sure, uh, sure. a brown liquid. Yep. Not beer, but scotch. Um, but at the same time, he owns this gym, and I'm always fascinated by seeing the things that he does. And I'm really interested in hearing about the ropes are super cool. I love seeing that. And I know <laughs> there's the typical probably. I shouldn't say typical because I know. I know nothing, right? So sure. that's why I love having you on at this point, so you can explain it. The weightlifting or the weights and the ropes and the mm -hmm. and whatever else it is that you're doing. And it's not to be confused either with, uh, it's not CrossFit, right? Correct. 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 Yeah. So can you do me a favor and dig deeper into your gym, what you do, what are, benef what are beneficial ways for people to improve their life that you've seen through your gym? Okay. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. How much time do you have? As I much mean, as you I, want. I could literally fill an entire podcast. Here's the deal. Day. Here's the great thing too. Not, I keep looking at the cameras cause I'm getting to the point where I'm drinking enough to talk to the cameras. You can come back <laughs> we can do this again. <laughs> oh, you sure. Know, if yeah, you absolutely. want to talk more, but do me a favor. And especially today, cause we've only been doing this now for, oh yeah, we haven't even been doing this an hour yet. Indulge us. Sure. Um, well, the biggest thing about the, about the gym, um, I, I did manage a, a CrossFit gym for a while, um, in the Iowa city area. Um, you may have told me, but I don't yeah, remember about, about five years worth, um, four, four years worth now, I guess, um, CrossFit Epic. Um, 
and they're they're gone now. They're they're now defunct. Do me a favor, and I'm not trying to cut in front of him because sure. I want him to explain all this. I want you to tell me why too. Why you changed over? What you did? Why did you get away from CrossFit? Oh sure, yeah, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, when I was in Chicago, um, I had a, like a little personal training studio, um, and I and it there's a whole lot of stuff that happened in there um, before I moved back, um, and it was great. I mean. I love every bit of it. I, I still miss some of the people that I had as clients and, and things like that. Um, I had, um, I had great personal relationships with people. Um, and it's one of the, the fun things for me as far as, as personal training or, you know, owning a gym or anything like that, or these personal relationships. Sure. Um, but as I move back, um, and, and then again, there, there are quite a few things that happened in my life that actually brought me back, you know, family issues and things like this. Um, back to Iowa. Yeah. Back to Iowa. Yep. 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 Man, yep. My dad had cancer and, and, uh, I came oh, back, that's and, right. which he's, yeah, he's yeah, fine. That's yeah, he, right. he came out of it. Everything's, everything's great. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah. so I remember you told me about that before I feel like, or you mentioned something yeah. about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and family is very important to me. Um, you know, as, as, uh, as much as I wouldn't tell my dad that, um, up until around this time, you know, yeah. they, things got pretty emotional for me and things like that. And I ended up moving back because of that. Sure. Um, and uh, so I sold everything I had in, in Chicago, you know, left, left the family that I had, or I should say family, but friends and, and, uh, the, the, the woman that I was dating at the time, things like that. I just kind of left all of it. Um, cause you know, I, I kind of had this feeling like, you know, it was going to be the last little bit. I was going to see my dad and that, that, really you know, that sort of thing, but yeah. And not trying to cut in for the Palatine area. Palatine. Yeah. Uh, Schaumburg. 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 So yep. my mom lives in, uh, really close to Warrenville, Naperville. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's where I'm, I go up there quite a bit. So I'm just kind of trying to bring in. So Schaumburg area. Kind yeah. Of I there. lived in Schaumburg. Um, the, the studio that I, I, I had, uh, first was actually in, um, Streamwood, but then I, I moved to Schaumburg later. Okay. Um, and, uh, things like that. But anyway, uh, so anyway, it's in that area, all in that area. Thank you for clarifying that. Cause I, I kept hearing you say that area. I just want to make sure I knew like, in like in a relation to where, cause I, I, go up there a lot to see my mom, but oh, also sure. at the same time I work up in Chicago sometimes too. Oh, mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to make sense, but keep going though. Yep. So your dad and everything. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, so I moved back, yep. you know, and, and spent a, a good amount of time, seven, seven months or something like that without working at all. Just kind of lived on what I had saved up and things like that. And just kind of kept things uh, moving and, and spent some time with my, my folks um, and trying to help with dad and you know, whatever else. Anyway, like I said, he came out of it. And so everything was, was great. That's awesome. Yeah. Everything was great. And, good. um, so I, I immediately tried to get back into some sort of a, a gym atmosphere. Um, and CrossFit I had found before I left Chicago. So um, you were doing that up there and yeah. they were no longer there. You said, right. They're no longer there anymore. Uh, or that the, was the, the one in Iowa city. city. I'm Iowa sorry. City. Yep. I, I, yep. I don't know if the original one, cause at the time when I found CrossFit, there was only like one or two gyms that were doing it. And now it's like, there's one or two in every single block. Down of there, course. Right? So yeah, yeah. so it's, yeah, it's gotten course. huge. Um, and, um, so when, so when I came back here, I, I went to, up, up to Iowa city cause that was a, you know, kind of the closest place to, to Muscatine and looked to see if anybody had a CrossFit gym. And there was one, there was one and it, there was this guy and he'd opened it in his garage and whatever. And so I, I, I hooked up with him and he had it in this little tiny little, uh, I don't know, storage space or whatever. Sure. Um, and then we just kind of started, started to, yeah. And we just started to grow it. Yeah. And it, and it was great. And again, we're, we were back to creating personal relationships and, and it was great, um, in that way. And, and the, 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 the thing that I will never take away from CrossFit ever is the fact that they have brought advanced training perspectives and, and, and training tactics to the everyday people, right. To, to people that, that never would have seen it otherwise. And, um, and have brought it single-handedly, um, made weightlifting okay for women. Right. Which I think is huge, huge, because if you look through the eighties and even into the nineties, you know, treadmills were what women have had a tendency to lean back towards. Um, and weightlifting was, you know, for those meathead guys. It's kind of sexist else. then. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Um, I didn't realize that then. Yeah. Yeah. So well, when did women start getting into like weightlifting and, you know, the whole like competition? This, this has and... been CrossFit. It's CrossFit. Honestly. Okay. Yeah. Right. Honestly. And okay. so, so that's one of the things I, I just can't take away from them. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's how I met my wife. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. She's a sociologist at the University of Iowa. Nice. And, um, and so her, her uh, field of study is, is, is sex and race. Right. But, but, um, and so she deals a lot with sexism and, and, and so on and so forth. Oh, okay. And so I'm, I'm, I'm hyper aware of it cause it's, you know, conversation that happens between us all the time at home. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but anyway, so we talked about that. So I met her because she came out to the, the CrossFit gym, which I was not into like running around and dating everybody at the gym. So don't think I'm that kind of guy. Never I'm did. not that trainer. Never did. Um, but you know, so I knew her for you know, a good year before we even, you know, did any of that. And she was going through a divorce and some things like that. And so sure. she was going through a lot of stuff already. 
Um, and I, and I assume, I assume that she was, uh, you know, using it as a, as a, as a coping tactic, you know, coping mechanism. Crossfit, to, to, you're saying? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, um, and we, we hit it off, you know, instantly. Um, um, but again, she was going through all these things. I was, you know, the trainer and whatever. And so we just it, it kept it at that for a long time. Um, but not to stop you one more drink. Oh, sure. Sure. Please, um, go for it. I'll let you dig into there. Go ahead. Okay, perfect. And while he's digging into that, um, getting himself one more drink, this is pretty cool because not only are we getting uh, a look into how he's got to the current alchemy gym that he's a part of, but we're getting to see how he met his wife too. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. I guess I am making this a pretty personal. I love it. I? No, that's great. That's great. <laughs> no, it's cool. Uh, I have a tendency to just talk. I hope that's okay. Guess what? A podcast is great for talking. <laughs> Keep going. Um, but yeah, so, so, uh, had that, but the reason that I fell away from CrossFit, right, which is, that was a huge lead up into that, um, was because of the fact that the things that I found great about CrossFit in the beginning, um, yes. started to become a lot more about propaganda and, you know, the, the community of CrossFit kind of ruined CrossFit, right? Because it the became community, like, you're saying yeah, the community, okay. Because it, be, it became full of, you know, the hashtag beast mode guys and gals and, is that the hashtag douchebag? Mode? Yes. Is yes. that what that is? Yep. Yeah. And, and, and so what they did was they started to become, so what, what was great about CrossFit in the beginning was that it wasn't, um, the gym bro people, right? It was, you know, workout hippies and things like this that, that wanted to be more fit and, you know, wanted to have this garage gym and, you know, wanted to have this sort of perspective of, you know, people that wanted to get together just to have fun and work out. Sure. And it became, then it started to become, okay, everything has to be a competition. Okay. Now it has to be. Um, you know, trash talking and, and all of this thing. And then it, they took the, the gym bro kind of douchey, you know, a, uh, attitude. Yep. And then it became much more about that. Right. So then CrossFit mm. became that to me, to me. That's what it turned into. And that's fine. Right. I get it. So in all fairness, um, and I said douchey too, which, uh, <laughs> so I know people that are into CrossFit mm -hmm. and I know, so I know a gal and her boyfriend or fiance or whoever it is that are going to like they're creating a CrossFit gym in Muscatine too. Sure. She used to be my uh, hairstylist, but I'm open to, to all of these. I like hearing about the different views mm -hmm. and how, you know, this affects certain people because it's interesting to me and you know, why people choose to do these things. And obviously it was a part of your life yeah, for sure. And you yeah. have appreciation of to a degree of this too, yeah. but I like hearing both sides of it because I don't want to hear just one side of anything. Right. Yeah. I don't. So that's why I love hearing this from him too, that and I can watch back through this and catch it all again sure. too. But it's okay. So I understand then it, it, it creates this community of people. It yeah. creates, yeah, it absolutely. can, it can not to say it's everybody, right? Not everybody, but no. it does, it, it can create this. Yes. So you saw this. When did you break away from that? It's been about three, three to four years ago. That's when you got away and did, yeah. when do, what, at what point did you decide that you're like, okay, this is not really me anymore. I think that it needs to go this direction for me in my life and what I want to accomplish for fitness. Sure. Um, well, as far as that goes, um, it, it, it what, what really turned me around was when, uh, in CrossFit, they had this thing called a hero wad, right? Which is this hero wad, hero wad, right? What I don't know. Wad means is. workout of the day. Oh, okay. And, um, hero wads are workouts that are, are usually fairly, fairly, um, long as far as time frames go. Is it like so many crunches or so many? Well, it, it, it's usually more dynamic than that. Um, you know, it'd be so many, um, power cleans followed by a bunch of running followed by, you know, some pull-ups followed by, you know, this and that. Um, so it's these really high dynamic movements, which is part of the problem. I could get into that maybe later. Go but, for it. Yeah. But, um, so it's these really high dynamic, dynamic movements and, and they're really gruesome, right? The workouts are really, really overly hard on the body, the joints, right. the right. the muscles. Is that what yep. you're getting at? Yep. Okay. And, um, and it, and it becomes like this badge of honor, right? How badly can you beat yourself up? Right. How badly can you, you know, just Ugh. break yourself down. And, um, and that's kind of what CrossFit CrossFit became over time. Right. So it became a lot less about these, these workouts that were comprehensive and you know having this well laid out plan and more about this how bad can i beat myself up and um as the as the, the crossfit job i was at as it, as it got longer and longer and, and you know further into it and further into it we got more and more members the more it started becoming that and the more it started becoming well every, every workout has to be awful is right? because there's more and more people getting involved more and more people are like saying we're gonna one up one up one up up absolutely one up. is that what it yep. is yep. And, and people were also seeing stuff online right as as, as we do 
and, and seeing more and more of these people getting beat up and, and, oh my God, look at these guys survive this horrible, horrible workout. I want to do this. Why do you want to do oh, that? Right. Right. And, Horrible. Right. Shoot. Well, that's, and that's what I'm saying. So, so it became a lot more about this yes. um, as time went on. And again, this isn't every CrossFit gym. I've, I've gone to some and visited some in other areas that are fantastic. The coaches are great. Fair enough. And, and they do well. Fair enough. Right. Yep. Um, and so I, I definitely don't want to paint it that that's everything. You're right. And I know a coach actually, who's a coworker who does it at part time. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, yeah, I completely with you, but right. it's, it, I feel like it doesn't matter if it's CrossFit or even if it's a, a gym that, not your gym, but like a different gym or a, you know, any field, there's going to be something somewhere that's going to, you know, cause not a bad image or, okay, yeah. you know, it doesn't Absolutely. matter what it is. Right. Right. right or McDonald's. Sure. There's some McDonald's. The floors aren't as clean as others. Those aren't my McDonald's. <laughs> you know that because I get those corners real good. That's exactly right. Keep going. I would hope so. I do. If I ever went to a McDonald's, I would know. You would know it's my work. Know. You know why? I get those roaches. Fair enough. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, so, <laughs> um, so yeah, so so with that sort of uh, atmosphere, I decided I just I just didn't want to be part of it anymore. Um, sure. And I and I was doing competitions. I had some buddies uh, that were at the gym with me that you know we would do every competition we can come across, you know, and things like this. And and we were part of that super competitive thing. How far did you have to go for these competitions? Are they local or are yeah, they yeah, most of them? Yeah, most of them. Okay, yeah, keep yeah. going. And, and some of them were were horrifying, right? You'd see things and you were like, "Why am I doing this? This is so ridiculous. Why is this even a thing?" You know, is that the bro um, one up? Yeah, the other bro. Absolutely. And the competitions are like that. They were just kind of geared like that. And again, I haven't been in, in part of any of it in you know, a number of years now. So, so it could have changed. Your it could have, it could have, I doubt it, but it could have. I have um, not been in any CrossFit gyms ever or any fitness gyms or sure. any, anything like that, but sure. keep going. Um, and so, and, and then the, the, the final tipping point, I have yes. a, I have a specific final tipping point. Tell me. Um, I had a, a personal training client who was coming to the, the, the gym and she was from Muscatine. Um, and, uh, she had told me that she'd gone into a, into a CrossFit gym there. And again, there were a couple of the time I'm not naming any names. I don't, no, it's okay. I, honestly, I don't even Go remember. I don't even remember what gym she was at. I don't. I honestly don't remember. Doesn't but, matter. Yep. Um, but she went in, and she's in her fifties. Yep. Um, and her friend, who she was going with to it, because she wanted to go as a support, as a partner, support partner. Yep. Um, because she's like, well, I work out with my trainer, you know, three times a week. I don't really need to do this, but I'll go so that you will go, and yep. then maybe you could join this gym. So they show up, and these women are in their fifties. That the the woman that was going to try it hasn't worked out ever. If if ever, I think, uh, anyway, something like that. So if, how old is she again? In her fifties. So health wise, is she even, should she even be working out? Possibly, but maybe not. And that's just it. You don't know, right? That's what waivers are for. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks legal um, team. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so they showed up and, um, yes. the, the, the first, the first task they had other than a, a light warm up was to hold this, this bar or they had a weighted bar over their head and do 50 lunges. Why are you having 50 year old women that have never worked out in their lives? Is that the same for 50 year old, 40 year old, 30 year old, 20 year olds? Yeah. 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 And so the, the, the coach was obviously not appropriate for the, for the member. Right. And, and just, just hammered them, hand, hammered it to him. And the, the woman that hadn't worked out in a long time, right. She obviously couldn't walk for a few days, had to take a few days off work and everything else. And it was this horrifying experience. So she was never going to work out again. Right. Because of that one experience. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And so I said, at that point, I was like, you know what? This is not, I, I can't do this anymore. This is horrifying. I just can't be part of this anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I immediately started. And at that point, I'd you know, been dating Sarah for a while. I think my wife, sure. Sarah. Where you met her at CrossFit. Yep. Yep. Um, I've been dating her for quite a while. And um, we, had, we weren't married quite yet. And I told her, I said, you know what? I, I really want to open my own gym. I want to get away from CrossFit. I want to have something that is, that takes the best parts of CrossFit and the best parts of everything else that we, that we know of currently sure, and combine them into something that's, that's new and different, 100% different, 100% new and, and take this into something new. And what year did you create your gym? It's, it would have been three years ago. So what was that? 2015, 2015. Yeah. And alchemy gym and or what's it called? Alchemy exactly. strength and conditioning. Al alchemy strength and conditioning. Yep. Of course you'll find it in his social media too. Why did you decide on alchemy, strength, and conditioning? Um, so I'm super nerd, like over the top, right? Yeah. Anybody that gets to know me, uh, I am super nerdy and I, I'm unapologetically nerdy. Um, so al alchemy to me was, I said, okay, if I'm, if, if, if we're 
taking the best parts of fitness that we know of. Yes. Right? What are the tenets of fitness? I was like, okay, well, you know, obviously there's weightlifting, there's, you know, running, you know, or, or cardiovascular capacity in some way. I fucking hate cardio. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, there's mobility, right? So you have to be, yes. you know, bendy and molding you know, and whatever, but then there's this emotional side of it, right? There's this mental side of it that, yes. that you're hardening yourself emotionally, right? So you have to, it's like, well, cause these are four tenths I'm looking at. Well, none of these are the same. Well, and I, I kind of mulled around about it and I said, well, you know what? This is kind of like, you know, old school alchemy, right? Because you're trying to turn, you know, lead into gold. Oh. And I was like, wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute. I've got something here. And just started kind of expanding on that, on that whole concept. And then it be, the four tenants became these four uh, elements, right? That I could actually come up with alchemy symbols for, right? The, it, like the old, like vintage, like old school alchemy That's awesome. symbols. And so I took this, I made this little sign and started like folding these pieces together and whatever. And I turned it into these four elements, right? Yeah. Which were lead, yep. right? Or I, I'm sorry, it was lead, it was iron. Oh, so, iron. You know, iron for weightlifting, right? And then there was air, right? Which was cardiovascular. Yep. There was the symbol for gold, which is being mold or mold, moldable or bendable, right? okay. so flexible. And then there was antimony. And the antimony was the important part because antimony is this, is this natural element. They add to metal to make metal harder. But antimony on itself is actually, is actually fairly brittle. I didn't know that antimony antimony. Yep. Antimony. Yep. And so I came with the symbol for antimony and I said, okay, well this is the mental side of this because, because on its own, it's very brittle because emotionally we're all very brittle. I mean, come on. Ego is like, we all are. Yeah. It's, it's the, it's the most especially brittle thing a, you have, especially as guitar players <laughs> or singers. <laughs> um, Whoa. I mean, uh, we're not quite uh, that uh, point <laughs> guitar players, but you know, <laughs> but, but yeah, so that became adding that to everything else makes everything else harder, right? Yes, it makes, yep. it makes it more resilient. So, Anyway, so I just took off with that and then came up with the name and logo and all this kind of stuff. And, yeah. and, it, and it all came together very, very quickly. Um, That's awesome. Though. Yeah. And so that was kind of my, my mainstay with that. That's so like uh, cool that you came up with that too, just by thinking of that. Um, wow. So. Oh, it gets cheesier. I mean, we, we came up with a whole bunch of stuff with um, uh, tying Hephaestus into this. The, 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 the Greek god who actually was building armor for the gods. Right. Yeah. So this, yeah. Anyway, so uh, it, it just kept it just kept rolling and rolling and rolling. And so we have these, um, we have these designs that we were hoping to put on t-shirts eventually and like have, you know, whatever. Um, but, uh, having Hephaestus, you know, cause we're, we, we are building the armor of the gods. I love when know, he so lowers that. his voice like, that. um, <laughs> <laughs> whether he's older or when he's talking about Greek goddesses, yeah, of course, cause Greek goddesses, G Greek. Yeah. Greek yes. gods. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, awesome. so anyway, but, but, um, so we have all these things and, and, um, it just gets nerdier and nerdier yes. for me, but, um, whatever but that so okay so you're like this is the name this is awesome and then how did you find a place like oh, oh, what what led you to find said place you're in okay so there's this this story is is, is fantastic right because um what ended up happening was the guy who owned crossfit epic at the time uh, sold the gym he sold it to this other guy and i wasn't supposed to know about it I, as the, as I was managing the gym at the time and the owner actually but lived you, in Idaho. Okay. Oh, in Idaho? Yeah. He lived, he, he and his, his wife had moved away. Um, oh, yep. so it's not like he owned a bunch across the country. He just happened to move. Right. He moved. Yeah. Why Idaho? Um, potatoes. I think it's for skiing actually, but skiing uh, and potatoes. Uh, yeah. I'm, I mean, skiing, <laughs> skiing on potatoes, on potatoes. No, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Are those, uh, Brussels, what are they <laughs> <laughs> what are those called? What kind of what kind ruffles? of ruffles? What potato chips? Ruffles? Ruffles? R russets? Maybe. Potatoes? Russets? R russets? There we go. Russets. Okay. okay. I knew what I was talking about. Russets. I mean, they make a great uh, skiing uh, polish. Sk ski, whatever. Anyway, so so you knew about this? I didn't. Um, and so I, I I found out about it 24 hours before they took over the gym. Okay, you didn't, but you found out. Right. Okay. I yeah. found out 24 hours before they were supposed to the gym. And I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Because obviously if, if these people take over, I don't, I'm not gonna have this gym anymore. Sure. And so I, I immediately called Sarah and I was like, okay, uh, all these plans that we were talking about, maybe eventually it's got to happen tomorrow. Oh shit. And, um, and no, I mean, she bear, she bore down with me on this and we just immediately within 24 hours, we had a space. So he's got a wife that's, it wasn't your wife at the time. No, she wasn't at the time. Well, so no, no, I'm sorry. Yes, she was. Wife that supports very not only wife. we were only like three or four months in, into our marriage at that point, but not only a wife that supports giving up a room in the house for a fifteen piece drum kit, but also supports let's go and make this happen. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Good for you. Yeah, I just I literally just 
turned everything around. Like, we're going this direction. And she said, okay, here we go. Um, yeah, so we made some phone calls, found a, a, a garage space, this tiny garage space. Um, and I told some of the people from the gym that I, was, I had to make this happen. And I had three of my buddies that were also at the gym. And between the three of us, we gathered every bit of equipment that we had um, between the three of us and just opened this gym. And Where so was it at, though? It was on, on Dolphin Drive, actually. How did you find the place, though, that quickly? I don't even remember. It, it happened so fast. Um, like you I, I think just I, randomly found out about this place. You're like, oh, yeah, we're dropping here. One of the other members that we, we, we still have, he's still with us, um, was a, a realtor. And I called him oh, and I said, yeah. you know, is there anything that's even remotely like this? And he said, oh, there's this, there's this guy over here. He's looking for, you know, renters, but it's short term. I was like, perfect. I just need it for a couple months. We need something. Right. And we, but anything. I have, but I have to have it tomorrow. And he said, okay, I'm not sure I can make it tomorrow happen, but we can definitely do it by next week. Perfect. So we had, we, I held the first workout in my garage, which I live out in the middle of nowhere, right? Where I was at that one yeah. time. Yep. And I just pulled all the cars out, moved everything out of the way brought in a bunch of barbells and stuff. Cause I had some barbells, a buddy of mine had some barbells and sure, you know, iron weights improvised, and, improvised. Yep. And we had a, a workout in our garage and we had 11 people show up and it was fantastic. Everybody had such a, such an awesome time. I mean, I, I hung these big rope nets from the ceiling and we, you know, climbed on them and ran around, whatever. You anyway, know, it was great. That's it was awesome. Great. Yeah, it was great. But you made it work. Yeah. Made it work. And then by Tuesday, right. We didn't have a workout Monday. Then on Tuesday we had a gym and on Tuesday I, I texted everybody that, that, um, was, that was interested in moving. Um, they came over and we didn't even charge anybody a membership at all for the first month. We, we, we'd paid for the place on our own. I said, you guys want to come in? And we walked into the place with 25 members in 48 hours, 25 fucking members. Yeah. And, uh, and it was fantastic. And, and most of them came from, uh, from the other gym. Some of them um, were just friends of mine that, that want to start working out. And that's came awesome. In. Yeah. And it was, it was amazing. So can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, Alchemy strength and conditioning. Mm -hmm. How many members do you have today? Um, we're, we're still fairly small. We're around the 70, 70 members. That's a lot so, of people. So we're still fairly small. That's a lot of people. It is. It is. And you know, and being that size, I still have personal relationships with everybody. Right. And that's important to me to, to maintain those personal relationships. Can you do me a favor and explain to me? Um, cause I, again, if you follow them on social media and I'll link it down below and give them in the description. <laughs> 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 um what's one example of a cool story you could share about what you've done with a um a member recently probably the one that that gets the most attention um i have this member and her name is deb and she is awesome um and she is an anesthesiologist at the university um and she's in her 60s um but she came in um and she's been with us for about a year and a half now yeah um but she came in and she was to the point of not being able to walk very well. Um, what was wrong with her? Um, she has arthritis in her knees. Deb She's, does? Yeah. And she was very overweight. <clears throat> like, uh, we don't want to get into weight specifics, but like, I mean like. Yeah, she was a couple hundred, hundred pounds overweight. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And so, um, and she was determined to feel better. What was her big thing? Good for her. Yeah, she just wanted to feel better. Good for her. And How she, did she find you guys? Um, through, uh, actually at the university hospital, um, so one of our other members was over there and just had mentioned it to her. That's oh, because Sarah works there too. And she's like, you get a word of mouth. Oh, no, no, no. Um, no so Sarah's okay. at the university itself. And so the university and university hospital are very, okay. Very I'm detached. sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Makes um, so sense. it was one of our other members. Um, and they'd mentioned it to her and she was like, oh, well, you know, I, I would try it out. Okay. You know? And she had another trainer for, for a while too, but. And there was some sort of, I don't know, there was some sort of money issue or whatever. And so she was a little gun shy anyway, because she was afraid of, you know, having something negative happen. She came in, she met me and I, I was like, I'll tell you what, you know, we'll do two or three workouts for free, right? We'll just, you know, if you see if you like it. Yeah. Just see if you like it. Just see if That's you so like cool my personality. That's so cool. You gave him a trial run like that. Yeah. And most people we do. I mean, we have who a free Who wouldn't week, like this but... guy? I mean, come on. Even <laughs> if you just met him for the first time through this podcast, who wouldn't like this guy? Uh, yeah. So, so she did. And then, um, about... Yeah, within the within the first year, I mean, she had lost about a hundred pounds. Um, Holy cow, a hundred pounds! Yeah, she lost a hundred pounds, um, and but, she was far more mobile than she ever was. Right, so now she can walk, she can ride a, a bicycle. Those oh are all things God, that she had not been awesome. able to do for you know most of her life. Um, and oh so yeah, God. and so that's that's the big one. Um, and she's been a huge um, advocate for us. I mean, she's brought us more people. Um, just going around the university hospital, just telling people that word of mouth, her story, yeah. Yeah. Word of mouth. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah. And so, so she's probably the big one. 
Um, some of the other ones, um, we had Deb, some, you're awesome. Yeah. Deb, yo, Deb's the best. Hope she sees it too. Um, but, uh, and, and we've, we've had a lot of that sort of thing because mainly, uh, at the gym I try and do, we're very goal oriented, right? I try and get people to choose goals and, and we try and build a um, some sort of a, a plan to get where they're going. And that's not necessarily the gym is, is providing that for them, but I'm trying to help them see a plan on their own. Right. This is this is where you're going, and this is what we need to do. Can I ask you a question really quick? Yeah. So let's say I'm walking into your gym, or I met you for the first time. Sure. And I'm I you know I told you earlier I don't work out. Right. It was all diet, so mm-hmm. I lost sixty pounds without fucking lifting a a, a dumbbell or a, a weight or whatever they're called. What would be something you tell somebody like me that's trying to further improve? Mm-hmm. What, what's, what, what do I need to know? What do I need to like, look, look into? So, so the first thing is, um, we always talk about nutrition first and we, first people come in. I mean, that's, we have to address that. Um, because the fact you can work out every day of the week, you know, for hours on end. And if you're still eating McDonald's every day, it's it just, it's matter. not doing anything. I work there though. So it's hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, true. so so in, in, in terms of like that, we talk about nutrition first and it's very general. Uh, you know, I'm not into any of the crazy diets, you know, keto or, you know, paleo or any of that. I think that's all kind of bunk. It's all just, um, um, repackaging of old information, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, and I don't, but just to be clear too. I'm not trying to cut in front of Ethan right now, but so when I, uh, and we've talked about this on previous podcasts, it was just me. I, I'm not counting calories. All I'm doing is just try to limit sugars mm-hmm. and limit carbs. And that's all I did. Sure. So it's not like for me, keep, so everybody asked me, is it keto you did? Because when I lose so much, it's, yeah. so when I, when I visit certain McDonald's locations every quarter <laughs> and they're like, oh my God, you've lost so much weight. What happened to you? It, they're like, are you, are you on keto? It's like, no, it's not keto, but it's, it's like my own thing. I don't right. count calories. I just make sure that I'm not doing the same negative things that I did before. You know what I used to do? I have to admit something right now in front of Ethan. Oh man, here we go. I used to be an addict. You want to know what my addiction was? Cheeseburgers. Mm-mm. Worse. Think about something sweet. Cinnabons? Oh, I would occasionally have Cinnabons. You know what mine was? I do lines of Oreos. You know when people do lines of Coke? Coca-Cola? Coca-Cola bottles of uh, drinks? <laughs> I would do lines of Oreos. <laughs> I, I understand. Do, I would do lines of double stuffed Oreos and man, like a fat kid. I was so happy. I would enjoy those so much, but that's the hardest thing. And maybe Ethan can confirm this too. I'm not trying to cut in front of him because he knows shit way better than I do is that do yourself a favor, get rid of the shit that's in your house that you shouldn't have in your house. Absolutely. So whether it's Oreos, double stuffed Oreos, they're so good. I miss them. <laughs> <laughs> Or, um, for me, here's the thing guys, I try, I try to limit chocolate, um, popcorn. I love popcorn, love pop, love popcorn, <laughs> <laughs> cheddar, extra, uh, butter blasts. You know what I'm saying? Um, all that stuff, get it out of your house, get it out of your house. He was talking nutrition. Ethan is absolutely correct. I'm not trying to point hand gesture open. Can I teach something really quick? <laughs> Look at him. He's so fucking adorable. Can I see that shirt? Find a way. Not an excuse. excuse. Do me a favor, everybody. Don't point open hand gesture. That's the non, uh, uh, what's the way I'm looking for. It's non, it's, I'm not trying. It's not aggressive. It's not aggressive. It's just like, follow this man's lead. Nutrition. No Oreos. No popcorn. Get rid of the shit in your house that you don't need in your house. Um, Go fucking work out. Go to his gym. Because you know what? Even though I don't work out, because <laughs> I have excuses. <laughs> Here's the deal. You know what? You know what the funny thing is, and I'm really fucking getting out of control here. So, you know what I thought? I'm gonna be gigging a lot. Before sure. I met you, I was gigging a lot. Before that, I was playing in a band out of Iowa City called Motorboat, and I was playing in my band called Blackout in the Quad Cities area. I was playing like every weekend. Mm-hmm. Like this will be enough. I can eat what I want. I'm still going to be lifting PA gear and setting up and I'm going to be doing live music. I'm going to be playing music and I'm going to be okay. Right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. You know what? (laughs) Nutrition. And then 
and then continue. That was my drunken uh, lead into past nutrition. Sure. Um, yeah. Uh, so once we talk about nutrition, right? Yes. And again, I mean, we could talk about the, you know my my problems with the keto diet and all that kind of stuff. You know, eventually, I um I I'm 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 kind of a you know it's just the way that it is kind of person. Very yes. straightforward. I don't sugarcoat stuff. And so um, when people come in and say, "Oh, should I try keto?" No, keto's I'd, bullshit. And they're like, "Well, but but people tell me all the time." And, uh, uh, <laughs> who told you this? And where did they hear it at? They hear it on social media? Fuck social yeah, media. Seriously, exactly. get out of here with the social media. So, and just be clear, <laughs> no, he's right. And the thing is with, with keto, too, that people ask me, like, do you lose weight with keto? And I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck keto is. Right. So, c- <laughs> can you help me? Because I honestly don't even know 100%, mm-hmm. 100% truthfully. What is keto? Do you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What um, is keto? So, so what keto is, is is you're reducing your carbohydrate intake. Down. Which I do a little bit. Right. Right. Well, there, there's a difference between controlling and then limiting, right? So there, there's, there's a big difference between that. Explain it. Um, so controlling is just making sure that, that you're getting what you need and you're, okay. not, and you're not getting what you don't need. Um, limiting is taking away what you need and getting it down to the point where, you know, you have these almost negative numbers. Is that keto? Yes. Okay. Yep. And so what they're doing is, is they're literally reducing their, their carbohydrate down to the point where carbohydrate can't, is not, you're not taking it enough to be used as fuel anymore for your body. Now, the hard part about that is your brain and your, you know, your, your soft tissue organs, things like this, they all use a, a carbohydrate, right? They always use sugar, simple, simple they starches. They turn it into sugars? Is that what uh, No, they, they use it for fuel. Oh, for fuel. Right? Okay. So, okay. so you're, um, what you're trying to do with that is actually you're trying to get your body to produce ketogens, right? Which is the keto, right? Oh, ketogens. Um, is that what it's called? Yep, I didn't yep. even know that. And your body will produce this to use as fuel. Um, and the hard part about that is, is again, that you're your brain and your, 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 your heart, your lungs, they can't use that, right? That's not what that's for. Um, and so the problem is that people reduce their carbohydrate down to the point where it's unhealthy. Right. And, um, yeah, you'll see weight loss for sure, for sure. But you know, and this is the same thing I say to everybody else is, is the weight loss the most important thing or is being healthy the more important thing, right? Because at some point you're going to, you'll lose enough weight, right? But then you're just unhealthy. Right. So you, you start running into all kinds of issues with, you know, blood pressure, uh, whatever. Sure, sure. The, the number of issues that we've seen people come in into the gym with, um, from doing things like that, um, all kinds of metabolic damage and, and things like this. We've seen a lot of it and, um, you know, it becomes a problem. Can I ask you a question? Sure. So like they're signing up and you're like signing the waiver and stuff when they're in your gym, is it like, do you have high blood pressure that you need to like tone it down a little bit or how does that work? No. Cause you know, when people, people first start out, um, especially if they've not exercised at all, um, it, everything is, is very, very low key. Like me. Yeah. I, I literally start people, <laughs> I literally start people out with, with a super minimal amount of work, right? We've got to work up to that. What is the, what is the minimal amount of work? Um, so usually we start with a little bit of mobility, um, make sure that you can actually open your hips. You can actually open your back, you know, um, things like this, uh, move in a fashion that should be normal to human existence. Um, and so many people eventually lose, right? Uh, most of us are some uh, kyphotic, which means that you're rounded over in the shoulder. Uh, most of us have a certain amount of, of lordosis, which is the overrounding of the low back and things like that. It causes back pain. Um, and, and a lot of times it, it comes from weak abdomen or like Lars. Oh yeah. That comes from either a weak abdomen or having, you know, too much belly hanging forward and it pulls his hips forward. Anyway, there's all kinds of issues that can, that can be caused can, by that. But, can I ask you a question sure. when you're, I'm not saying he's analyzing me, but if you saw me sitting here, what can you tell by me just sitting here through the whole time we've been doing this? So I, I don't judge people on, on when they're sitting, but I did pay attention to a few things when I showed up and you were walking me around. I want you to tell me, uh, be honest, uh, be honest. It won't offend me. Oh, no, I'm, I, it's not really offensive. Right. I mean, cause no, it's, it just, it's just, factual. I'm right? curious. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so you are rounded over in the shoulders a little bit, right? So yep. we do have a certain amount of kyphosis. That's yep. to be expected. That's What's kyphosis? Uh, rounding of the upper back, right? So you round over. Like a uh, hunch? Yep. Like poor posture. Yep. They, yep, they, yep. they always yep. called it poor posture. Sure. Forever. Now it's kyphosis. But anyway. Um, kyphosis. Um, yeah. And so, so what I learn all this stuff. So keep going. Yeah. So that, yeah, that comes from, you know, having a life around computers and cell phones and whatever, because we, we start to fold into that. Well, in the vehicle all the time, does that affect that? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I'm in the vehicle all the time. Yeah. I call it make- I call it the four C's, right? The cell phone, couch, computer, and car, car, right? So, yeah. Holy shit. Yep. And so all of those things put you in a position that's comfortable, which is rounding over. It is true. He knows he, he's like, uh, he was pre-qualifying me and he's right. 
<laughs> so so there's that and we and then uh, so immediately we start trying to um, open the chest you know contract the back you know get the muscles in the back operating so that in your gym you're saying yeah. yeah so, so like, if somebody starts out that's the first thing we start with how do we get rid of that how do you get rid of can you get rid of that eventually yeah but here's the deal time, but yeah. i'm not changing my careers at that's this okay. point so i'm still doing the same traveling yep. in the vehicle all the yep. time um, you know how much my my truck you know how many miles my truck has on it out there hmm. 200 and my 2014 Silverado has 228,000 miles on it. You want to know how many my Tundra has on it? How many does your Tundra have? 270. It's a 2010. But yes. It's got 270 on it. How many, how many miles on it when you bought it? 90? 85? When you, oh, so you put a lot of miles on too. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So yeah. is your seat wore out like mine? Yes. <laughs> it is yeah keep in mind when i was bigger i put a lot of miles on that yeah. truck too so it's like it's yeah and i love my truck i do i mean i, I and love i love mine thing. too yeah yeah, yeah. um so actually, what, do, what do we do for for people like me then keep going um oh no uh so um we literally just try and get the upper back to contract right we start trying to get the shoulders mobile we try and make you more mobile right yes just more mobile yes um and, uh, and that's one of the first things that everybody loses is shoulder mobility and yes. upper and neck mobility, T-spine mobility. Um, I'm sorry, T-spine, thoracic spine, the middle of your back, right? Underneath your shoulder blades, right? That portion of your back becomes very, very uh, tight and fused and, you, and it doesn't twist and rotate anymore because it's just locked forward. Yes, that's the position it's used to. Yeah, yep. And so we just start making that more mobile. Um, and yeah, I mean, yeah, you're going to still sit in your truck. You're still going to sit in front of your computer and we, we're very aware of that. Um, but, uh, but we still... You know, as long as you're making progress getting around it, you don't have to change it, right? We just have to change your habits outside of it. So somebody like me that's in the vehicle all the time, mm -hmm. then what can I do on a daily basis to help me with what I have, what I, what I do? Sure. Um, well, I mean, you can't really change the vehicle, right? I mean, that you, you can't really do that. Um, but instead, what we do is we start getting into, um, you know, every so, so much time, right? You'll have a stretch that we'll do, right? Some sort of a, of a mobilization for the neck and upper back, right? Um, or something like that, you know, so five times a day, you know, and, and I even try and get people to set alarms on their phone, right? So at, you know, 8 a.m., 10 a.m., noon, you know, 2 p.m., 4 p.m., we're going to do this stretch, right? Or these two What's, stretches. Can you describe to them what the stretch is you're talking about? Um, well, one in particular, I always have people do it constantly i'm sure a lot of people from the gym are sick to death of it but um so you'll just interlace your fingers behind your back right you pull them back behind your low back like this yep. behind your back yep just like that yep. yep and then you're gonna press that press that down right so you press them down in a way and it actually pulls the chest apart just like that yep and then from there we're gonna pull our shoulder blades back in together and then we're gonna roll the neck slowly yep slowly Right. This is fucking the first time ever we do anything like this. This is awesome. <laughs> Which yep. direction? Counterclockwise? Um, all the way around. We're just going to make big, big, big swooping uh, movements. And again, we're, we're trying to uh, release the SCM, release the scalings of the neck. We're trying just trying to relax the neck. Lock this, though, yep. like this. Yep. Yep. And that, that's just to kind of keep them together. And as you press down, because your arms are, are stronger than your upper back is going to be at this point. And so if you press down, right, and pull with those arms really hard, it pulls the chest apart. Yeah. Right. And so that's what we're trying to do is just make that is just make it so that the parts that are, are strong are, are conveying the movement that we're trying to pattern to the parts that are weak. Right. And so we're just trying to make it doable. Yeah. So to speak. Does that make sense? <laughs> I'm going to re I'm going to rewatch this and it'll make a lot more sense when I'm rewatching it for sure. But yes. So this kind of stuff helps though for mobility. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so we're, again, what we're trying to do is loosen the parts that are tight. And then make the parts that are that are weak stronger, right? So we're just trying to contract them, and a lot of it is just trying to rewire your brain to remember how to contract these muscles because they, they don't currently. Sure. And that sort of thing, and and so we start off with just really simple things like that in the very beginning, and get people to the point where they they realize, and some of it's just realization, right? How immobile the, the mid back is, how immobile your neck is, uh, how weak your shoulders are, and how immobile your shoulders are, mm -hmm. right? Being able to take both hands, reach up all the way up overhead. Um, thumbs facing backwards and being able to literally pull it back behind your ears so I can see your ears in front of your arms. That should be a normal range of movement for everybody. And most that, people are locked forever. in here. Is it really? Yeah. So like, oh yeah. yeah exactly. So, and and you, you see it already, right? <sighs> that should be a normal range of movement. And most behind people have lost ears, it. Yep. Yep. I have. Holy shit, man. Yep. 
eye opening. Yeah. Right and, there. And so th those couple of things are huge. I could feel um, it. As soon as I did that, I'm like, holy fuck, I can feel it in my arms. Yeah. In my, well, right through. The, yeah. Right through here. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Wow. Yep. And then from then, from there, we just go into, into muscle patterning. You know, what, what movements are, uh, are easy for you and which ones are hard for you. And some of it's built on balance. Some of it's built on, on muscular imbalance. And some of it's just, you know, what you do on a daily basis. Yeah. A lot of mopping. Yeah. Mopping. It doesn't, doesn't help. Get the corners. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, so awesome. So yeah. This is the kind of cool shit that it's good to have somebody in a, in the gym like his, where he knows what he's talking about. This isn't just some fly by night asshole that's coming through and be like, yeah, you should join my gym because this guy actually knows what he's talking about. And what's even more important too, I feel like is that you've been to both sides CrossFit. Yeah. So you know what's going on. Yeah. And you can apply, you know, the best practices from everything and apply it to your own gym. So kudos to somebody like him. And I'm going to start, you know, you know, um, trying to raise my arms up behind my head like that. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm learning shit all the time. And you know what? I'm going to keep drinking tequila and scotch, which is better than beer. The truth. Not keto. Truth. But it's, it's, you know, it's like vodka. There's nothing to it. It's just basically, I heard that agave has some like uh, good properties apparently to, is that bullshit? I have no idea. Um, I don't either. But, I'm, I'm not a doctor. Well, I, I love to pick on stuff like that. Cause again, social media is like the death of us all. Right. Honestly. Yes. But uh, you know, everybody wants to hear what they want to hear. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> one of the biggest things that gets spread, right. So if you see an article that says, Ooh, chocolate is good for you. Or whiskey, I've never seen that whiskey is good for you or drinking wine is good for you or lines of Oreos is or good line, for yeah. you. Is it, that good for you? No, <laughs> but if you, if anybody ever sees this, right, they immediately share it. Oh, <gasps> look, I can eat, drink all the wine I want. It's good for me. Let oh, me ask you this. Should word. I know go back to my previous life of life of doing lines of Oreos? No, no, never. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I pick on those sort of things because, um, mainly because of the fact that, that, that you know you'll share it because you want to hear that here's what right? i so, here's what i learned um drinking scotch and drinking tequila tequila is good because apparently blue agave is good for like cleaning out your colon apparently it, it could be i don't know apparently there's not like <laughs> any other benefits besides that but it keeps you regular and also mm -hmm. there's nothing to it there's no like so when i was drinking beers mm -hmm. when i when i met you originally mm -hmm. you know which was like a year year and a half maybe it was two years ago i don't even remember how long ago it was now yeah, but i'm not really sure it's, it doesn't it's matter bit, but yeah it doesn't matter so i was drinking like all the microbrews the ipas the stouts the all that and there's sugars carbs sugars carbs carb sugars right mm -hmm. god i actually enjoy drinking this kind and the vodka too here's the thing he likes drinking his vodka with little uh seltzer water or club mm -hmm. so what how do you how did you say it earlier tonic Tonic. Tonic water. So I'm a basic Ed. So I, I do like Mio in my vodka because uh, that's just how I roll. But uh, here's the deal. These types of drinks we're drinking today, for those that are watching, it's better for you than beer. It's better for you than Guinness and uh, the IPAs in your life. And even to be honest, Bud Lights and Budweiser's. Sure. Can you can you think back your dad, who thankfully he's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tiebacks. Tiebacks. Um, teacher stuff. Um, so basically when you were <laughs> McDonald's anyway, um, your dad, what did he drink when he was, when you were growing up, what did your dad drink? Oh, Coors Light still Coors, And he still does. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. 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 He's a Coors Light kind of guy. When did Coors Light even come out? Was that like forever and ever ago? I, it's as long as I've known. I mean, my dad drank Budweiser heavy, but heavy. Okay. Yeah. But heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Bud fucking heavy. And you know what? I fucking hate that shit. Not because my dad <laughs> drank it, but because it's fucking awful. It's, it's pretty gross. Yeah. Pardon the sure. language. And by the way, you can swear, even though you're not, he is a clean cut motherfucker. It hasn't sweared probably once in this whole podcast, but you can, if you want to. The thing is though, I'm glad I don't take that route. That constant Budweiser drinking that beer gut thing. It's funny because not drinking beer, I've actually, I've lost weight. Mm -hmm. And again, I thought that gigging constantly would be like, this is it. This is going to help me maintain, right? No, it didn't. Because if you're doing lines of double stuffed, it's not good for you, is no. it? No. That's why it's great to be in a position where you can go to a gym. And if you're out there and you're on the fence and you're thinking, what do I want to do with my life? 
is it going to get any better? Should I be doing double stuffed Oreos on the weekends every weekend? No, you shouldn't. You should instead be figuring out, can I improve no, the nutrition in my life? Listen to somebody like Ethan, who knows what the hell he's talking about, to be fair. I mean, he knows what he's talking about. And go to a gym like his and go to his gym. Do me a favor. I'm going to get a link for your gym. Do you have a link for it? Oh, yeah. I'm going to share it because I want everybody to find a way to not have an excuse in your life. Don't be like me. Don't just settle on dieting. I want you to actually improve your life. I want you to be better at who you are. And I want you to take people like him into your life because, and that sound weird. I want you to take people like him in your life and accept that and improve your life. Like Deb. Yeah. That's so awesome. That story earlier, somebody who's in the fifties, sixties, sixties, for fuck's sakes, if you're improving yourself, even even in your 50s or 40s, that's awesome. Because let's face it, we don't live forever, do we? No, God, no. We don't live forever. In the meantime, you know what we're going to do? We're just going to have a, ourselves a nice clear liquid to drink. We're going to play some music <laughs> and enjoy our lives. And we're also going to feel good about ourselves as we exercise. The last thing I want to talk about before I let Ethan go, and now I'm getting off on my own little rocker here, but I've enjoyed talking with Ethan about all this. Tell me about the ropes and we're done oh, the for the ropes. night. Oh, man. So before we get into the ropes, I want to say just one quick story. Sure. I met Ethan, I don't know how many, a year or two years ago, whenever it was, when we jammed together. Um, and then I see that he's doing, I knew he was in, he had this gym and I'm seeing him doing these rope things and they're like, holy fuck. I mean, I have no concept of reality. When I say reality, I mean, I don't know how much these ropes weigh. He, in his social media, he's like, he's doing these exercises, exercise Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. with these ropes and these ropes are big braided mofos, right? I mean, they're how, how, what's the diameter of these ropes? They vary. Uh, we've got inch and a half, two inch, two and a half inch. And then I also have some giant three inch ones. So they're, you know, really big. It's, it's, that's diameter. Really big. That's what she said. And what oh, I'm man, saying is that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was going to be that kind of podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it go wherever you want. But what I'm saying is that I want you to describe to me and explain to me and our, our listeners too that are out there, mm -hmm. the ropes, what is the purpose? What is the benefit? And why would you recommend them? This is this is your lead out through take as long as you want. Yeah, yeah. Um, so as far as far as fitness goes, I mean, I've always been into barbells, always been into dumbbells. I mean, it's kind of a staple. Um, but a after a while, it, you you realize how limited that is because of the fact that it's 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 very you know bilateral. It's always yeah. It's just it it, it has its place, and I will always stand by it. But there's always that point where. Um, I was like, okay, well, how do I improve my agility? How do I improve my, my, um, just, uh, overall well-being and so on. And barbells will do that to a certain extent. So I started looking into auxiliary, I don't know how you want to say that, like auxiliary fitness, um, kettlebells and, and all these Is tools. that what that means? Auxiliary fitness? Well, uh, from a, um, from a popular standpoint, I think so because barbells have always been kind of a staple. Kettlebells have been a little more popular recently. Um, but now we're starting to see a lot of other things pop up that are actually really old instruments, but people are kind of bringing them back, I guess. And they're yeah. you know, like steel clubs, steel maces, battle ropes, you know, things like this. And they're all very, very old training implements. Steel maces? Yeah. Steel maces. Correct. Keep talking. Um, and so, uh, you, you, you keep seeing all these, these old, old equipment showing up and, and people are using it as implements for exercise. And, um, that to me was incredible. I was like, Oh my God, here we go. This is stuff that, you know, has actually, um, you know, benefits outside of, of just being in the gym. Yeah. And, um, so first it started off with kettlebells and, you know, kettlebells are fantastic. I, st I still love kettlebells. And then I got into this, Well, anyway, so I, I had gotten into the battle ropes a little bit and I, I kind of only saw it as, um, like an upper body endurance. They're referred to as thing. battle ropes. Battle though? ropes. Yep. Battle ropes. Sorry to interrupt you. No, that's okay. You'll also see them called battling ropes or um, conditioning ropes. I've seen recently, which is kind of a misnomer because it's not really accurate either. But anyway, um, and so I, I, um, I really got into that um, just from the aspect of it being a conditioning, a conditioning tool. Like, oh, I can really get an upper body conditioning um, endurance. I'm sorry, endurance. That's probably a better term, a little more um, um, complete, but. Um, and so I, that, that was what I knew. 
And then I had luckily um, uh, seen in this from this company called Onnit. Oh yeah, Joe Rogan's. Yep, Joe Rogan's. Yep, yep. Joe Rogan. And I got I got tied to them kind of out of happenstance and met this this guy named Aaron Guyette. And Aaron is, has become a, a dear friend of mine. He's just such a fantastic person. But uh, um, and he was doing their battle ropes courses. He was teaching them his certifications. And so I took the certification course. And he started talking about it on the end, on the science end of things, right? He was explaining how this works scientifically, right? From a physical aspect of the body, yep. not just this is a semantic, you know, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it. Like, um, um, like, uh, um, well, I can't even think of the word I'm trying to think of now, but, um, anyway, it's not just a toy. It's not just this kind of, you know, um, um, Shoot, I wish I could think of what I'm trying to say. But anyway, um, it's not just a toy. Right? It's okay. It's yeah. a it's a it's an actual tool that can be used and so on and so forth. So I was like, oh okay. Um, well, I'm I'm all ears. Explain this to me. And so he started laying it out in a very scientific fashion. And if there's one thing to, to, to get my attention is if you explain it to me on a on a on a level that's actually scientifically proven, right? Sure. Yeah. Now you got my attention. Yeah. And um, so we talked about um, metabolic pathways and and walked our way through metabolic pathways and how metabolics tie to time frames and how you can use time frames to actually deal with um, certain uh, pathways through the body to deal with strength, to deal with power, to deal with endurance, and and how to train all of these pathways with just the rope rather than needing multiple tools to train different parts of the body in different ways that you're training the body. Um, I was like, Oh, this, this is incredible. I mean, I only need the one tool to do all of these things. And so you started doing some, you know, uh, you know, N equals one sort of experimentation, like how does this work on me? Right. Cause I'm not going to take it to anybody else if I can't do it to myself first. Yeah. And so I started just training myself and it was just, and it was destruction. I mean, I was just like, Oh my God, this is awful. This is really hard. And, um, and I, I wrote him an email and uh, he responded back and it just, it just, it was that simple. And pretty soon we started going back and forth and back and forth. And, um, it became very important to me. And I started saying, okay. Um, and again, we're back to, this is, you know, my nerdiness. Okay. How can I take this, use this, uh, to complement a barbell, to complement a kettlebell? How can I use this in the same fashion? How do I use this to, um, now work contralaterally, ipsilaterally, bilaterally? How do I make all of this stuff work to my body? Right. And, um, and it just started experimenting and putting together these, th these little programming devices, which yes, I'm one of those nerdy guys that sits around and practices writing programming, which seems to be a lost art anymore. Right. But anyway, um, so writing these programs out and trying to follow this stuff out and, yeah. and, um, and building power, building endurance, building strength and, um, writing back to him saying, look, this is what I'm finding. And this is what this is happening. He's like, oh, awesome. You're the kind of person that I want to help me with all of this stuff because you understand it you understand what I'm seeing. And, and so we started just kind of, you know, working this stuff out and he had a company called uh, battle ropes exercises, which I'm hoping it's okay that I mention it, but um, mention it. Why not? Yeah. Um, battle ropes exercises. And, um, and uh, I started trying to get, to get through that and he was running some, some courses through there. And I of course wanted to be a member and you know, all this thing, which he's now um, tied with a company called kettlebell Kings and they have their living dot fit program and, and battle ropes exercises is now tied with uh, kettlebell Kings and living dot fit. And so it's getting, you know, larger and larger. Um, but all that being said, um, I'm still using these, these, these programming techniques and all this stuff. And I'm still talking with Aaron weekly, you know, we, we still, uh, um, do all these things together, um, which actually then led to me getting involved in this special for, I, I don't know if I, uh, should try and dive into that, but I'm getting tied into, um, a special forces event now called the process, which they're flying us into Canada to do all this yes, um, week long were, fitness. Thing. Yes. Yeah. Um, kind of like uh, seal fit on steroids kind of sort of an aspect, but anyway, um, um, so it's, it's, it's grown, but I wanted to portray my love of the battle ropes and how I, how I got into that. And not only that, but actually demonstrate programming through social media, right? Try and list it out and say, look, this is how a program works. You go from point A to point B. This isn't random. Yeah. This isn't, you know, just kind of like randomly throwing crap together. Um, this is how we show progression. This is how we do warm ups. And, um, and that's actually one of my biggest things is, is trying to show people how to properly warm up and properly cool down. Right. How do I train my body? How do you warm up for like battle ropes? Um, I mean, there's all kinds of ways. Uh, I, I mean, give I me could, a common way. I could write a, a list of it. Um, and well, okay. So we do it this way. Um, we just had to get the body moving first. Right. So one of my, my favorite, I call it, I call it squat warm up. We have squat warm up one and two and three. Right. And they're little patterns, right. Where you do a, a wall squat. Uh, what we call an air squat or a body weight squat 
and then a goblet squat, which is holding a kettlebell, right? So we, we warm up the, the legs first, warm all that up. Maybe we'll do some single arm kettlebell swings to kind of work counter Maybe even do it from a staggered stance. So you're pushing through your right foot, pulling, I'm sorry, pushing through your left foot, pulling with your right hand, pushing through your right foot, pulling with your left hand, that sort of thing to kind of wake the brain up, wake the body up and kind of go that moving. And then we talk about power. So maybe we'll do some squat jumps or something like that. Then the body's ready to move, right? But we have to get through all of these things first to get the body okay to move. Getting warmed up. Yep. Yep, getting warmed up. Yep. And then we attack the battle ropes. Um, and with the battle ropes, then we, we choose which, you know, in, in the programming, right? We'll choose which metabolic pathway we're trying to choose, right? We're working power, strength, endurance, you know, power, endurance, strength, endurance. How are we going about this? Um, and then we choose a, a, a movement pattern, right? And again, whether we're trying to move multi-planar, single planar, you know, whatever that is. And then we go from there. Right. And there's all kinds of tools. Um, I, I usually try, have a tendency to stick fairly simply, um, with movement patterns, um, because it's easier for me to program around it. If I stick to simple patterns yeah. and you'll see all kinds of stuff online with people doing crazy, doing backflips and all kinds of crazy crap. Right. Oh my God. Um, and I'm not necessarily in, into that because those, those patterns are too hard to build the rest of the programming around. How do you, how do you get around that? Um, but, uh, uh, yeah. And then we, we go from there. And so a lot of, and, and I kind of walk through that too on social media, right? You'll see some stuff where it's power and then I love the slow-mo videos, you know, like down below. I do too. I love it. I love it. Yes. Um, Yes. Yeah. And so you get the slow motion so you can see the rope moving and you know, the ropes are, are, are fantastic in several ways. I'm drawn in. I'm not going to lie. I know I couldn't handle it, but I watched it. I'm like, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. It's, it's fun. Right. Uh, but the, the biggest thing is the rope gives you immediate feedback, right? If you move the rope and you watch the rope going down, you can feel it too. Oh yeah. You can feel it. But if you see it, you, you know if you're doing it poorly or not. You know if the right and the left are moving together because the ropes will look identical. If they don't look identical, you're not doing it at the, in the same, right? So, it's, I'm not trying to interrupt him, but you fucking watch those. And I, par, I apologize, but you got to fucking watch him do this too. It's like when he does... When I've seen him do this with two arms. And I'm watching him like, it's fucking mesmerizing. I'm like, oh my God. Besides the fucking... I can only imagine the hurt, the feel, right? in your muscles from fucking doing that shit, but watching it, it's so unbelievable watching him do this stuff. It's incredible. And, and the ropes are heavy. I mean, and that's, I think that one of the, three the, inch up to three inch. Yeah. The three inches are super heavy. Um, is that the ones you usually post? Which ones do you usually post in? My favorite one is the, is the two inch. That's the good kind com- of yellow and like black middle, middle row. Yeah. The middle, the middle. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cause with the ropes, I mean, you can instantly change whether it's heavy or light, right? All you have to do is either step back and make the rope tighter and it moves and it's lighter. It oh feels my lighter. God, that makes sense. Yeah. Or if you step forward and it's more slack, you have to pull it harder to get it to move. Right. So it's heavier. Yes. And so all you have to do is move forward or back. Yeah. It makes it super simple. Right. And again, yeah. we're back to, we're back to that same aspect of you only the one tool cause you can make it heavier. You can make it lighter. Fucking science. Right. You can science. Exactly. Science. Um, and, and as far as fitness goes, I mean, that's the quickest way for me to, to make sense of anything. It has to be proven. We have to have the science, right? Number systems that are system that are, that are not systematic are yeah. just they're random. I mean, yeah. that's anyway. I'm not going to get off on, on that for too far. But this is awesome, though, hearing this from him and understanding this because I'm going to watch back and and like watch this and be like, oh, that's awesome because the the, the ropes thing, the battle ropes thing, is something I've always been intrigued by the most, just because it's like watching it's mesmerizing, and then also I know it takes a lot of muscle and got the million dollar fucking man here with me today on the podcast. It's, it's incredible to hear this. It is. I'm not trying to sure, like, no, no, that, that's great. Yeah. I, mean, I, I love when people are interested the in The pedestal it. is there. I mean, you're awesome, man. You got this shit going on and it's like 70 plus. No, 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 not 70 plus. How many people do you have in your gym? About, now? about 70 members. That's what I thought he yeah. said. Okay. That's incredible. From how long have you been doing this? Three years? Yeah. Three months. Yeah. I mean, when you started out, as it has, it has to be, it has to feel rewarding, right? Oh, I, I love what I do. I, I, I would not trade what I do for anything. Oh my God. That's incredible. This gentleman right here, not only is he improving people's lives, he's continuing to in, find a way to improve his life too. Oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Find a way, not an excuse. If, if anything can be taken away from this podcast, I feel like that has to be my hashtag for this, this, um, this podcast. Uh, yeah, that's actually why I wore this shirt. I, I figured I had to have some sort I of motto you know, to you, walk in with. If you look at me, I'm wearing my Nike fucking, you know. It's an athletic shirt. It's a sports it's shirt. It's like, right? 
I wear it because <laughs> I'm basic. But is it, the thing is, is though, I don't work out, but I, I need to. And finding inspiration from people like this is pretty incredible because it, it, all it takes, how much a day? How much a week? I, you know, I, I usually tell people to start off with three times a week, you know, for 40 minutes, half hour, 40 minutes. It doesn't take that much. Oh, honestly. my God. I, people put too much on it. I mean, yeah, you have the people that do five, six days a week, an hour and a half a time. You know, you don't need that, right? That's 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 because of enjoyment, right? All you need to do is move, right? Half an hour, three times a three times a week. I mean, that'll that will show you some sort of fitness. All you need is a few things in your life. All you need is love. A little bit. Of, <laughs> see what I did there? All you need is love. All you need is a little physical activity. What is that love? physical activity and then all you need is not double stuffed oreos not double stuffed oreos would we agree upon that i would agree with that ethan burns has been nice enough to hang out and explain do me a favor can you please come back can uh, you come back and explain so he talked about his upcoming very briefly mm -hmm. you were going to canada right and yeah. doing all this stuff yeah He's going to keep improving and expanding upon what he's doing and making people's lives better, whether it's Deb or I'm going to take shit from what I heard from him and I'm going to improve it. And I'm going to do, you know, incorporate it into my McDonald's life. <laughs> Mickey D's motherfucker. Mickey D's. Special sauce. You know what? I don't have nothing to do with it. I'm on the janitorial crew. That's all there is to it. And is there anything else? I, I, I want to say before we end this too, because we've been at this for a little while now, this is awesome. I've learned so much from him, but I didn't tell you my fifth favorite drummer. Oh, yeah. Um, are you going to, are you going to, are you going to uh, say it now? Or are you, are you going to tease me and like make me come back to hear it? I'm going to make him come back because <laughs> Ethan Burns is fucking awesome. And I want him to come back. I want him to talk more about how things are going with him and his life. If he'll, if he'll come back, I hope you will. Yeah, absolutely. This is awesome because even though this is one of those people that I haven't I haven't known very long in my life, it's so awesome to hear people that are family oriented, musicians, and also he cares about people and he's putting those uh, those alchemy, strength and conditioning people in his life. Is it a family? Oh, it's a family for sure. Those family people are first, and it's so cool to hear about that, and it makes me want to improve upon what I've already done with my life which hasn't been anything in particular diet wise. It's just being, be just trying to be better about myself. I feel like I need to always improve. And now, I mean, I'm self-conscious about my, my posture and everything since he's <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing though. I travel for a living. So it's like, I get it. It's it's like, what, what can I do? Be, you know, it's like as a person that travels all the time and I know I've got, you know, posture issues or whatever i mean what can i do though it's it's tough do i join and figure out you know how do i create a better posture or is it going to kill me am i going to be am I to be dead at 60 instead of 70 or what's the no, deal but you'd probably be a lot happier if you had better posture i would be, I, because you're, you're you know it's destructive man i mean it does eventually get you to the point where you can't move it does and you know what i, <laughs> I play i play instruments on stage for, as a part-time kind of thing. And, um, you know, what's funny. Maybe it's the last thing we should talk about really quick. And before, are you okay for time wise? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I don't even know why I asked that. It's so great to have Ethan on here. So when I play and I still have gigs and stuff, it's like, I get to the end of the night. I'm like, fuck, you know, mm -hmm. like third set out of four sets. I'm like, Oh, what can I do? to improve my, my mobility and, you know, be like, how can I avoid being that guy? I feel like I'm getting old. You say, so here's the deal. He's, he's older than me by a little bit, a little bit, but I still feel like I'm old as fuck. Right. And I feel like, Oh God, you know, at the third set of the night, I'm like, am I going to get through the, that four set? Right. How do, what is something that I could do that, whoever's watching can do to improve their life, to make them a little bit more. Um, um, so, so the, hmm. so the first thing would be, you're going to have to strengthen your backup. And I, I mean, I realize it's a very stereotypical answer from somebody who owns go for strength it. conditioning gym. Go for it. But maybe the, the back has to be stronger, right? What do, we, what um, do I do? What, what does anybody do in that situation? What's the basics, the littlest things you could do 
besides joining a gym like yours? Yeah. Um, the, the little, the, the simplest things. Um, so things that you could do when you're sitting around uh, watching TV at night is literally do things like planks. I mean, I know that that's a super basic movement, right? But, but planks are great. Straighten up everything. Uh, yeah. Yep. To help, everything to, to help strengthen. Um, and again, we're talking about strengthening pelvic floor, strengthening your your abdomen, your low back. You know, things like this, um, especially your mid back. Um, that helps. Um, there's a movement I like to. We call it a lying opposite. And it's where you lay on your belly, um, arms extend out in front of you, thumbs up like Fonzie. Wait, is that does that prove hey. how old I am? Hey. 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 <laughs> um, but then you 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 raise your right arm. You're and your not left that leg. much taller than me. Come on out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and you, you'll raise your right arm and your left leg together. And then you'll raise your left arm and your right leg together. So it's almost like you're kind of swimming, but you're oh, laying on the ground. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and it causes, you know, contraction for the low back. And it, again, we're talking about brain patterning and things like this. And um, so even simple things like that, just doing them at night, you know, for, you know, three sets. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, 20 or 40 or something like that. Sure. Um, and it's, you can still watch your favorite TV show or whatever. What have you been um, watching lately on TV? We haven't even talked personal stuff. We've all been talking about musicians and... Or music and and gyms, but what do you what are you watching yeah. lately? With um, sorry, Sarah. At Sarah, yeah. What yeah. are you guys watching? Oh man, uh, you know, what's funny is is uh, I, I'm at the gym so much. When she is too, right? Because she helps me with all of this. She's, sure, she's yeah. incredible. She really does. Uh, she backs everything I do. It's 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 insane. Um, she is absolutely a superhero. But um, uh, honestly, you know, when I get home at night, I get home around eight o'clock. You know, I have to be at the gym at five thirty in the morning. So it's like it, we don't get a ton of time together. Um, and, and recent, recently we watch more cartoons than anything. Cause what are you watching? The little one, um, she's into the Incredibles. Oh yeah. Um, yep. yep. Incredibles two came out on Netflix recently yeah. too, right? Yep. And she watches bubble guppies. I'm not familiar with that one. Oh my gosh. My kids are 14 and 11. So they're yeah. much older now. You don't want to know bubble guppies. It will infect your brain. Bubble guppies. Uh, bubble guppies. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm um, going to watch it now. And, uh, and then of course, you know, the, the, um, 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 you know, the, the, the old school stuff. We went to watch Sesame street. Oh even yeah. Though it's old, right. We had to, we had to go back and find DVDs of the seventies, you know, yeah. Uh, um, Sesame street for <laughs> here's the deal. Do you remember tickle me Elmo when that came out? Oh yeah, of course. That oh. was the second an iteration of, of Sesame street though. Right. That wasn't, the no, no that it was wasn't like, the original. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 That's the kids. You don't, you don't know this, but tickle me Elmo. That was, how old were we at that point? I mean, Oh my gosh. That was like the big thing. People were trying to yeah, get. I was in my. I was easily. I think I was in my teens or even my twenties, maybe. Let's do this. Can we talk about a couple of things the next time you come over? Sure. Tickle me Elmo. Oh man, tickle me Elmo. Double stuff Oreos. Yes. Clear liquids. And mops. And mops. And <laughs> disinfectants that kill cockroaches. <laughs> Perfect. E Ethan Burns, everybody. <laughs> He's been so great to come on tonight, and I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I could see him again. It's been a long time, and uh, hopefully he's been okay, and he's going to be okay to come back after dealing with me tonight. Sure, but oh, I have um, so much more I could talk about. I would love to talk to him. Eighteen hours worth. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Here's the deal. So last year when I started this podcast last January, I was due one a month. Now I'm doing two a month this year. Sure, I'm. I'm going to have you back. I don't care if it's later this year or next year. Mm -hmm. Please come back. Sure. Tell me how your your alchemy strength and conditioning gym mm -hmm. is doing because I admire this man not only as a family man, a musician, business owner, um, and he's like the million dollar man. Find a way. Can you do it one more time? Oh. Find yeah. a way. Find a way. Not, not an, an excuse. excuse. Don't be don't be like me. You hear me? Don't be like me. Find a way not an excuse that's the hashtag of this one ethan burns <laughs> thank you so much My you want to give me a send-off give us a send-off everybody until next time until next time stay healthy healthy clear liquids <laughs> clear liquids like you're a uh, what's the what's the joke the um the housewife on a diet that's what we do we do clear liquids around here so they're liquids. It's better for you. Or brown water. I do scotch usually too. <laughs> Until next time. Hey, I'm going to see you next week. We're actually going to have um, Dan Bobek's going to be on. We're going to do uh, some video game playthroughs on Resident Evil 2 on PlayStation 4. Until then, Ethan Burns was kind enough to come out. I'm so, dude, I'm so glad you came out. That's so awesome. Million dollar fucking man. Alchemy strength and conditioning. 
Take care of yourself. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.